Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Master Your Profitable Messaging live event. I'm so excited to have all of you guys here. Today is going to be jam-packed. We're going to go through a lot of information. There's a lot of people here. By the way, guys, we do this event one time a year. Once a year, that's it. That's the only time we do it, and you guys are here. It is that time of year where this presentation goes down. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go through a lot of material, but I want to check in with you guys first. Where's everyone tuning in from? Go ahead, put it in the chat box. Name and where you're tuning in from. What country are you guys coming from? It's always amazing because we get people from all over the world. Uh, so let's take a look at Carol. Carol Jean is here. Carol has our award for the most attended free events that we've ever done in the history of the company, and she is here. Everyone say hi to Carol, please. Uh, Carol, where are you tuning in from? We have, uh, who else we got here? We have Stefan from Atlanta. We have Kim from Iowa. We have Rebecca from the UK. We have Joanne from Boston. Uh, Crystal from Oklahoma, Michigan. Patty from Seattle. Oceanside, California. Uh, PA, US. What is that? Pennsylvania. USA. Tune in. <laughs> Jill's tuning in from USA. I love it. Wisconsin, Alabama, uh, Michigan, Seattle. Randy from New Orleans. Ryan from uh, Ontario. Caitlin. No, Caitlin from Colorado. Uh, we have Utah. We have uh, England, the Caribbean. Uh, what is that? Sweden, Canada, Ontario. A lot of people from Canada. I love it. Uh, England, Idaho. Joy from Africa. Africa. That's amazing. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. AJ, woo, woo, Arizona. We're streaming live from Flagstaff. So if you guys live in Flagstaff and you walk through the neighborhood and you see a bunch of TV's a load of places, probably us. Um, Nova Scotia, Canada, Russell from sunny Florida, and we have 132 more comments to go through, and then we'll get, just kidding. <laughs> I can't read them all, guys, I love it. Hungary, uh, Europe, London, this is amazing. Las Vegas, Netherlands, um, Connecticut, Canada, amazing, amazing, amazing. So what we're gonna do here in a second we're just going to hop right into it. We're going to get started. What's going to happen today is my team is going to uh, turn the chat on and off. And here's the reason why we're doing this. The reason why we turn uh, the chat on and off is that when I get down into the material, I really want us to pay attention. A lot of times people get distracted in the chat. Sometimes people try to answer other people's questions when they don't actually know what they're talking about or they misinterpret what I said. And so I want to make sure we turn the chat on. We turn it off. We'll open it up. I'm going to be asking you guys questions. Um, for those of you who are asking, we will be here for about an, uh, an hour, hour and a half of training today. We'll do a small Q&A um, at the end, which is a lot of fun, where we're just going to have you guys ask questions, and then we're going to have everyone vote on the top five to ten questions you want me to answer. And so, you know, if you have a good question, write it down. Maybe it'll get answered today. Um, but I say let's go ahead and get started. How many of you guys are ready? How many of you guys want to just get into the material? I'm sure... I'm sure a lot of you guys just are ready to go, want to get into material. That's what we're going to do, okay? We have a lot to go over today. Okay, ready? Margarita says yes. Kat says jump in. Uh, comments are flying in. I can't even read them fast enough. Layla, Layla, good to see you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull up my slides here. Um, let's go ahead and turn the chat off for now. We will turn it back on here in a little bit, but I really wanted to get into the material of day number one um, for a few reasons. We have a couple things that we need to go over. We have some things that we need to cover, but first and foremost, I want to make sure everyone's in the right place. What we're going to be covering over the next three days, and by the way, today's the 18th. And day number two is going to be on the 20th, which is Wednesday. Day number three is going to be on Friday, the 22nd. Okay. So a lot of times people will show up on tomorrow, Tuesday, thinking, oh, it's day number two. No, we give you guys a day in between each of the sessions so that you can take the information in, maybe catch a replay, but really prepare yourself for day number two and then day number three. Again, I only do this presentation one time a year, which means I really take time to go through the material and I really want you guys to grasp it, okay? So 18, 20, and 22nd, mark those down in, in the calendar. And what we're gonna be covering is how to create engaging demand creating, and most importantly, profitable messaging. So what that means is your communication. I'm not talking about copy. I'm not talking about the one-liner on your Instagram bio. What I'm talking about is how are you teaching? How are you communicating? How are you selling? Do you have teachings that are creating demand and building connection at the same time? 
the number one problem that I see with course creators is not that they're not good enough or it's not that their material's not good. It's that they don't know how to communicate it in a way that drives engagement, that drives audience, that drives sales, and creates demand. And that's exactly what we're gonna be covering here. No matter what you use, I don't care what you guys use. It literally doesn't matter, okay? So I don't care if you're using webinars. I don't care if you hate webinars. I don't care if you have a podcast. I don't care if you're using launches. I don't care if you're using challenges or you're live streaming or using ads or emails or book a calls or video series or workshops or evergreen or live launches or you're just starting out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a six figure business, seven figure business, eight figure business, never made a sale. The way in which you communicate is what's going to get you to the next level, no matter what your level is. It doesn't matter if you're using Instagram. It doesn't matter if you're using YouTube. It doesn't matter if you're using TikTok, Facebook. If you guys have the problem that I'm talking about, you have really good info and you're putting it out there and it's not getting the results you want, there's a problem and we're going to get here to fix it. So again, I don't care if you're using Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, or even MySpace. That one's a joke. If you're using MySpace, you have bigger problems than I can fix, okay? So if you're using MySpace, just stop. <laughs> they went out of, out of style like five years ago, okay? But again, this also works in almost every niche. So a lot of the comments that I hear is like, well, Brandon, what about my niche and this niche and this person and this da 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 It works in almost every niche because what we're gonna be talking about is how to change the way in which you communicate and that is how humans process information. We're gonna teach you how to communicate in a way that humans process information. So we've had people in the spiritual niche who've been able to go from no calls, getting booked on their webinars to all of a sudden booking out 10 calls, 15 calls, every single time they do it, bringing on more clients. We've even had people like Paul Turner here in the construction commissioning industry. Guys, I don't even know what commission, what, what that even is. I don't know what commissioning is. I don't even know what construction commissioning is. And that's the other point that I want to make. Paul is now setting a goal from when he started working with us. He's, his goal now is $30,000 a month because he hit his first goal of 10, 15,000. Now he's at 20. Now he's going up to 30 because of the way he communicates. And I don't even need to know much about your industry. What we're going to be showing you is how to pull out the right information that you already know that's inside your brain and showing you how to reconstruct it. So again, it doesn't matter what you're using, what platforms, what industries, if you're successful in your communication on one platform and one strategy, you will be on the next. We've also had people in the weirdest industries like, like Corey here in the potty training space who literally teaches parents how to get their toddlers to go number two on the toilet. And she now has uh, 10, $15,000 a month reoccurring over and over and over again because she changed the way in which she communicated. She even has people coming to her saying, you're inside my brain, repeating the messaging back to her. We have people in the parenting space who've had videos on TikTok that have gone over a million views almost every time they do it, driving thousands of organic leads, okay? Using the same, everyone's using the same principles. And these principles are what I'm gonna start showing you over the next three days. We've had people in the picky eating space all of a sudden get all these comments. This person had over 100 comments on one post from getting zero to now using our frameworks, our process, our communication style. 100 comments saying, tell me more about your program. Even we've had Courtney Elmer in the podcasting space who was already out of multiple six-figure revenue, doubled in a year her revenue just by changing the way she was communicating, okay? That's what we're gonna be showing you guys here today. And we've helped people in all sorts of industries, everything from teachers, helping other teachers, to life coaches, to teenager communication, therapists, yoga, weight loss coaches, fertility coaches, marketing coaches, tattoo coaching, confidence coaching, spiritual people, mediums, psychics, intuition coaches, horse-related industries, which I didn't even know was a thing until I started this business, but there's a lot of people teaching people how to do horse stuff, you know, like how to take care of horses, how to connect with horses, how to ride horses, uh, dance teachers, copywriters, martial arts, intimacy coaches, art coaches. Um, I don't even know what that last one was. Bookkeeping, business coaches, social media managers, farmers and homesteaders teaching how to farm and homestead. I don't know what that last one was. But I don't know where it went. <laughs> Relationship coaches, energy coaches, and more. So if you're sitting there going like, well, my industry is unique. I'm a little bit different. I want to do... It doesn't matter. Let's stop that noise. Let's stop that chatter. And let's pay attention 
to what actually works, which is changing the way in which you communicate, okay? So we all know the online expert space is blowing up right now, and it's making it harder and harder to stand out. Over the next few days, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be delivering to you guys a philosophy. I'm gonna be delivering a philosophy that has taken me over five years, and actually it's been closer to 10, but I've been intentional with it over the last five years, over five million, I don't even know how much we've spent on ads, over $5 million in ads, it's probably closer to six. Just within our business, not including any of our clients, this is all learning, and what I want you to know is it's taken me millions of views to learn what I'm just gonna hand you guys over the next few days. I'm gonna break down the most impactful pieces, the pieces uh, that you are gonna need, the pieces that are the foundational pieces, and what I'm really excited about is for those of you who wanna go deeper with us, who want the exercises, who want the workbooks, who want us looking over your stuff, who want our insight, and you want more than what we're gonna cover in these next three days, our program, New Generation Mastery, which is our signature program, which also opens up once a year, will be opening up next week. So that will be coming up next week for those of you that want to go deeper with us that are just like, I just need to bite this problem in the butt and I'm done and I want to learn from you guys. I want to get it figured out. You have the opportunity next week. But this week, this week is all about you. It's all about giving you the foundational things, okay? So here's the biggest problem that you guys are likely facing right now. You have knowledge and you have skills. This could come from experience. This could come from degrees or certifications or whatever it may be, right? You have knowledge and you have skills. And what you've been doing is you've been communicating and trying to build an audience to get attention using things like ads, emails, content, podcast, lives, webinars. You've been doing all of that stuff, right? What I want you guys to realize, and the very first thing I want to teach you, and it's maybe a little obvious, all of that stuff is communication. All of that stuff is messaging. What you say in that ad, what you say in that live, what you say in that email, what you say in that webinar launch, evergreen, whatever, whatever you say in that is messaging. If you're not saying the right thing to get the results, because all of you guys want the sales and the engagement, and when that isn't happening, when you guys aren't getting the sales engagement, a lot of people go back to ads and strategy and platforms and this and that. And they say, oh, the strategy's broken, or I, I don't want to do it, launches don't work for my industry, or webinars don't work for me. Guys, I've worked with 3,000 course creators. Everything works. Every platform works, podcasting works, YouTube works, Facebook works, live launches work, funnels work. Like, they all work. That's why they exist, because they work. It's the way in which you communicate within those that makes the biggest difference, okay? So when we can fix the communication we start to see results like this. And these are just, these are my own videos. One video has 93 shares, another one, 526 shares. And I wanna, sh I, I wanna be very clear on something, guys. I can pay for views. We can go to Facebook and say, hey, give me a thousand views or whatever, or a million views. You can't pay for this. You can't pay for comments, you can't pay for shares, you can't pay for engagement. That happens because whatever you're saying, whatever the topics are and how you're de demonstrating it or however you're teaching is what drives people and compels people to like, share, comment, and all of that stuff. Another one of our clients, Caitlin Batcher, 630 shares. Uh, the reason why I show this to you is obviously, yeah, I wanna get you guys excited and pumped and show you what's actually possible for you. But what's really important for me, and this is just comes from my heart, is that everything you're gonna hear over the next three days is based on knowing and mastery. It's not based on knowledge or something I read. It's not based off of a degree I got or a certification I got. It's based off of actual, real experience and mastery over my craft. If you guys are gonna learn messaging from someone, do you wanna, like if you're gonna learn to ride a bike, do you wanna learn from the person who has read and studied how to ride a bike for 20 years but has never actually ridden the bike? Or would you rather learn from the person who has mastered their messaging for the last 20 years? That's what you guys are about to get. And the reason why I tell you that is because I want you to understand the value in which I'm about to show you. I want you guys to truly understand that what you're getting isn't just theory. It's not like I'm just sort of learning this. Uh, it's, it's stuff that I've mastered. This is a picture of me back in 2011. And we can turn the, we can turn the chat off. Uh, thank you. So I'm, I'm glad that it's working again and all that stuff. But this is me working for my dad, hated it 
hated, even though I had a cush job making $70,000 a year as a, as a 22 year old, hated my job, hated working. I remember thinking, am I really only going to get two weeks a year to myself? Like that's bullshit. Like <laughs> I don't want that, but I had knew absolutely nothing. And so I went out on my own. I failed for four years working out of the garage. Then we moved in with my in-laws because I couldn't even afford rent. So we lived with my wife's parents for four years. I worked from their dining room table that you see there. I knew absolutely nothing about what you're going to learn today, but then we eventually moved out. Now I'm working out of a, I have the whole garage to myself now, making a little bit of money. We were making about $200,000 a year annually inside the business at that point. My son was born and then we ended up fast forward, three kids, various products later, a multi seven figure business. And what I've learned in building all these different businesses is how to communicate. And now I have a business teaching you messaging and communication. What you're learning is literally taken me years to learn. And when it's applied, the best people in the space see amazing results. Even Bob Helig, we worked with him for, for about six months and he was able to double his revenue. I've worked with people like Carrie Green from the Female Entrepreneur Association, James Wedmore, Jim Fortin, Rick Mulready, Caitlin Batcher, Mel Abraham, and the list goes on and on. The reason why I share this with you is because I know there's people here today that have seven figure businesses. There's people just starting out. What I can't express this enough. What I'm going to be teaching you guys applies to everyone as long as you're plateaued. Okay. So we're going to turn the chat on one more time. We're about to get into, into the juicy details. Um, but I want to take a gauge. How many of you have, have been following me for a while, have heard of me before? Just put OG in the chat. How many of you are new? You can put it, you can put it in the chat. Um, or I think we're going to put a poll up here in a second. I just want to gauge how much information I need to go into the details. Are you new or are you an OG? Let me know in the chat or we can put up a poll. New or OG? I think there's a little bit of a lag. So what we'll do is I'll actually just keep moving on and I'll take a peek once it, once it comes through. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So it's like 50, 50 almost, it seems like, or maybe a little bit less, but that's great. Um, okay. So what we're going to do, and I do want to warn you guys, there's a lot of people telling you how to build a business online, how to gain authority, how to gain, like what to do with content. What I'm going to tell you over the next three days is probably going to go against the grain. It, this is my warning. It's probably going to go against what you think you should be doing, but that's the reason why it works is because we keep doing the same thing. That's not working. The same thing that as everyone else, we're just going to keep getting the same results as everyone else. What everyone is teaching you is above the surface. What everyone is teaching you is like a tree. It's like the, there's the tree, it's above the ground, it's the fruit. And, and what I say is, is the fruit and the tree and everything you can see are things like platform strategy, new content types, frameworks, new system, and I don't know, Matt, can we throw these on, up on the slides up real quick? Um, new software. And what happens is so many people start chasing all of this fruit. They start chasing the new strategies and the new platforms and the new type of content and the new frameworks and the new this and the new that and the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da without realizing that the fruit is only there because the roots, the foundation, the actual things that are growing the tree is what produces the fruit. It's what makes the tree work. It's what makes the fruit come alive, right? Without the roots, there is no fruit. There is no tree. What I'm going to show you is how to get rid of all that other crap that we don't need to focus on right now and show you how to get to the roots. So again, it doesn't matter what level you're at, okay? What we're going to show you is how to get to the root of the actual problem to start fixing all of these things that you guys are going through, okay? Now, with that being said, I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys. For those of you who didn't know, we have a Facebook group, a free Facebook group that goes along with this presentation in the next three days. What we're going to be doing, this is for everyone here, I want you to share your biggest breakthrough with me after day one. Wait till day one is done, okay? So after day one, I want you to use the hashtag MYPM number one, and I want you to share your biggest breakthrough inside that Facebook group. And yes, it has to be inside the Facebook group. Don't send us a message saying, well, Brandon, I don't use Facebook. What do I do? You don't post. You have to be in the Facebook group, okay? So if you don't have a Facebook profile, either t 
tough luck or go get a Facebook profile. But if you're on Facebook, you're in that group, use that hashtag, post your biggest breakthrough. And what we're going to do is my team is going to go through it. And, and at the end of day three, we're going to pick a winner from day one, day two, and day three. Each of you guys are going to get a hundred bucks and pause. No, I'm going to change it. If you do it today, if you guys do it today, after, after today, I'm going to make the prize 500 bucks. Okay. So I'm gonna give you guys 500 bucks, the winner. Okay, not if you post, the winner. So my team's gonna go through, pick a winner, and the winner's gonna get $500 and a chance to get a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stream that one-on-one -on -one session in the group next week. Um, so we're gonna have three winners, a winner from day one, a winner from day two, a winner from day three, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we are going to pick one of them and you're gonna get a one-on-one -on -one session with me to go through your messaging. So use that hashtag in the Facebook group at the end of today. Now, for those of you who didn't know, there is a VIP experience of this launch, which includes um, extra Q&A sessions, which start tomorrow and, and on Thursday. You also get a free mini course on how to um, uh, create a PDF that is gonna show you how to create demand, how to pull people in, how to keep people engaged, and pick a topic that you know people are gonna want, and you get the director's notes, meaning from day one, two, and three, I, I took all the notes, a 12-page document you get access to that has all the notes you're ever gonna need from day one, two, and three. It's 47 bucks. So if anyone wants to upgrade to that VIP experience, you have till end of tomorrow to do so. The link will be around here as well. By the way, you guys don't have to do it. You don't have to. This event is totally free, but for those of you who want it, it's there for you, okay? Uh, the next thing that we have your, we have for you is a resource page. So all replays, downloads, all of that stuff will be available for you on our resource link. So all you need to do is just go to wherever my team is, go inside the Facebook group, my team will post the link. We have a resources page, so all downloads, everything is gonna be there um, for you for the next week as well. Okay, so let's get into it, guys. Here's the cold hard truth. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how skilled you are. It doesn't matter how big your heart is. That's not enough to make it inside of this space. There's a lot of people with good hearts that are not making it. And there's a lot of people that are just out there to steal people's money that are doing really, really well. It's because they've learned how to communicate. They stopped using the same advice over and over and over again. So what I want you guys to do, what I want you guys to do is to stop making these mistakes. Okay? Okay. This is the first thing that I'm going to teach you guys. And this is the first thing that I want you to understand. We've been told so many times that the best way to add value is by delivering information. How many times have we heard, give your best stuff away for free, go ahead and give out uh, more information, people will feel compelled to buy? Put it in the chat box. Have you heard that before? Have you heard that advice? Have you been doing that advice and not seeing results? Well, what I want to do right now is I want to show you why your messaging is off and what you need to stop doing. And I want you to look at this holistically. I want you guys to look at this and realize teaching your audience what to not to do or what to stop doing is another form of value. Sometimes teaching them mistakes, teaching them what they're not aware of, that they should be aware of, is another form of value. And I want you guys to remember that. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, we can turn the chat off, by the way, team. Um, I want to tell you guys a quick story. So a lot of you may not know this, but I was a cross-country and track and field runner for a lot of years, and I got a full ride to run. When you race, you have to race in track spikes. They're lightweight shoes, absolutely no support, but they will shave five to 10 seconds off your time. If someone came to me and was like, Brandon, I want to learn how to run a five-minute mile, and they're running 505, 510, they can't break it, I could tell them a lot of what to do, and they could go work out harder, do more, eat better. They could go do a lot of things. Or if I look down and I see they're wearing trainers, these really heavy shoes, and say, just stop wearing the trainers, guess what? They could probably break the five-minute mile without having to do all of that work. So what we can do as course creators in order to change our content and our messaging is in instead, of stop, instead of giving people so much information all the time, of here's what to go do, you can also tell people, here's what not to do. And that's another form of value as well. So what I wanna do is go through some of the mistakes you guys are probably making and some of the things you're probably experiencing. So if your messaging is off, you've probably been plateaued in audience and sales and growth for three months or more, no matter how much 
value you're putting out there, and it feels like you have to beg in order to sell. You probably feel like your content's really good, and like it's so much, so much value, great information, but it's not getting the traction that you want. Number three, and go ahead, or uh, yeah, Matt, can you throw these on the, on the screen real quick? And if you're not getting people asking how to work with you, and this one's huge, guys, in your, when your messaging's working, people should literally be coming to you asking, how do I work with you? What do you have to sell? How do I get learn more? If that's, it doesn't need to happen all the time, but it should be happening on some level. It probably also feels like people only know how good you are after they work with you, but not before. That's probably another thing that's going on when your messaging's off. Things that once worked don't work anymore. You don't know why, because everything you're saying and doing is the same. But what might be happening is the world around you is shifting. Your messaging and communication is not relevant anymore. It's not new anymore. People may fix the problems and learn from someone else. And then if you see competitors doing the same thing as you, and their stuff takes off and yours doesn't, and you don't know why because you're delivering the same information, then your messaging is off. They're communicating it differently. They're doing something else. Now, this is happening because you guys have brake pedals and you don't realize that you have brake pedals. So if you're in a car and you want to go forward, I can tell you, yeah, push the gas, but if you have your foot on the brake, it doesn't matter. You're not going to go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you how do we remove your foot from the brake so you stop making those mistakes. And then the second half of today, we're going to start going into what to do and day three is what to do and day, day two is what to do, all of that stuff, okay? But we have to remove this. And I want you guys to watch what I'm doing because I want you to do it for your audience as well. Teaching them what to stop doing is massively valuable for them, okay? So all of that stuff is happening because you're either 70% or more of your content is how-to information or tutorial based. The number one thing I'm, you're gonna take away from these three days, and if you've been in my ecosystem for any amount of time, what I'm gonna tell you is stop doing so many gosh darn tutorials, guys. Just stop. Delivering information does not sell. There's so much more that we need besides delivering information. Number two is you're speaking to too many people and you're confusing everyone. You're like, Brandon, I have five different avatars. I have this avatar and this avatar and this avatar. It's like, well, they all have different problems. They all have different experiences. Different. How the heck are you supposed to talk to five different people at a single moment? There's ways to structure your messaging so you can talk to multiple people, but you shouldn't be talking to all of them at one time. And sometimes we don't need more than two or three avatars. Sometimes we just need one. Number three is you try to do more content. You think it's a consistency problem. So you're sitting there going, I just need to post more. I need to put up more content. I need to post three times a day now. It's like, guys, if you're posting really crappy content and you're just do more of it, you're just posting more of really crappy content that no one resonates with, no one finds relevant, okay? Number four is you focus more on strategy and posting than you do on the actual content and trying to get into the awareness of your audience. We need to tap into the awareness of your audience. I'm going to give you guys an exercise today on how to do that. Number five, you focus more on the solution. This may not be obvious to you yet, but when you talk and you communicate, you're on solution. You're trying to convince someone that they need your stuff. Stop convincing them that they need your stuff. Get them to come up with their own conclusion that they need your stuff. That's what we're going to show you over the next three days. And then the, the sixth mistake that you're making is you add value by delivering more information. Instead, what we should be focusing on are things like removing limiting beliefs, validating, explaining the unexplained to them, explaining why things are happening that they have no idea why, revealing mistakes, which is what I'm doing right now with you guys, reveal mistakes that they're making that they don't even know they're making so that they can stop doing it. Number seven is you survey your audience, and I will tell you right now, there's a lot of good information that can come from surveys. But when we survey our audience and just do blindly whatever they tell us in a survey, you're going to run into a lot of problems. Because when you ask your audience, a lot of times they don't even know what they want. They don't know what they need. A lot of the times they're not even going to tell you the right information because when you ask them consciously, what do you want? They're going to tell you consciously, but all of their decisions are made subconsciously. And this one's huge. We're going to talk about this today, and especially on day number two, there's a difference between conscious and subconscious. 95% of your audience's, audience's decisions, their decisions to watch a video, to click on an ad, to opt in, to attend, all of those decisions are made subconsciously, not consciously. 
in most cases. And then number eight, you focus more on vehicles, not what drives the vehicle, okay? So here's what's going on right now. I call this the content circle of death. This circle represents your niche, okay? So this is your niche. The niche is only gonna grow so much each and every year, but what's happening is you guys have so many competitors coming into the space right now where when you're the only one, it's great. You can do whatever you want. Post all the tutorials you want. Post all the information you want. You don't need to be disciplined with messaging. Just do whatever you want. You're the only choice. So you're going to see success. But then when you get one competitor, now the niche is split in half. You get four competitors, now it's in quarters. And then it goes on and on and on and on. We have so many competitors right now coming in that your industry, your niche keeps getting smaller. Your piece of the pie keeps getting smaller, which makes it even more important for you to stand out. We can't keep just doing all this random stuff, like more tutorials, all this stuff is not working. You can't keep doing that because it's not working. We need to stand out in a different way, okay? Even if you're seeing traction right now, it will plateau at some point. There's something called warm traffic messaging, where it's when you create this following off of certain messaging, but then it plateaus and you can't grow it anymore. You're not sure, really sure why. And then what starts to happen is you tap out that audience no, no more of them are buying. But then you take your, your messaging communication, you try it to cold and it doesn't work. You try ads and it's not working. It's because your messaging plateaued, your communication style plateaued because of the content circle of death. You have so many competitors, you're now just blending in with everyone else. And this is getting worse and worse and worse. So the question is, how do we start to fix it? Well, instead of, and I know people who've attended this training in the past love this, Instead of saying, hey, I'm a cat, and I'm just going to be like the orange cat over here and maybe put a top hat on, instead of being that, and that's what most people do, is like, I'm just going to say, I'm going to be a little edgy. I'm going to be a little polarizing. I'm going to be a little bit different. Well, all you're doing is you're just becoming an orange cat in a sea of white cats, even though there still are orange cats. What I want to do and what we're going to do over the next three days is make you the purple freaking bulldog. Hashtag purple bulldog. We've used this in the last couple lunches and people love it. I want to make you guys the purple bull bulldog inside of your space where there are no competitors. You're a purple bulldog in a sea of cats. No one cares if you're the orange cat, gray cat, you have a top hat. No, because you're the purple freaking bulldog, okay? And this is what we've been able to do with clients like Casey Morris, been able to 2X her business, get her to multiple six-figure launches by making her the purple bulldog inside of her space. So... What we have to do is we have to stop the biggest communication blockers that you have going on right now. So if you don't have the notes, I would write this one down. If you have the notes, don't worry about it. But messaging fix number one is we have to stop focusing so much on information, tutorials, how to, in order to deliver value, okay? So what most people think is I need to give out value in order to, um, to, to build an audience. And that is true, we need to give out value, but information is not the only way to give out value. This is why we don't see encyclopedias and the best-selling charts. This is why the, the best-selling books are always shifting people's perspective. They're getting you to see things you've never seen before. They're getting you to realize the mistakes that you were making. They're really changing the way in which you think and see. Those are the, what the best-selling books do. Now, I will say there is value in delivering information, I'm going to be delivering information to you guys over day one, day two, and day three. But if you think all we need to do is just deliver more tutorials, more things, it's not really going to work. It works, I would say, for maybe 5% of the people out there. So if it is working for you, keep doing it. I don't want you to change it. But there's a lot more that needs to happen with this. So education doesn't need to happen in the form of tutorials. Inside of New Generation Mastery, we actually have like six different ways to do educational content. But what I want you guys to think about is the difference between an encyclopedia and a TED Talk. Both very educational, but one is way more engaging, one is way more eye-opening, one is way more entertaining. And at the end of a TED Talk, if someone's like, oh my God, I, I need help in this area, they're probably gonna buy from the TED Talk speaker. If they were allowed to pitch, that person would make sales, right? Now there's other ways to add value. So raising someone's awareness, which we'll talk about here in a second, is another way to add value inside of someone's life. Teaching them mistakes, which I just did with you guys, is another way to add value inside of someone's life. There's a lot of different ways to add value inside of someone's life, even connecting with them, validating their experience, their emotions, making them feel heard. There's so many ways to add value. But I do wanna be very, very clear with you guys. 
we still want educational content. We still want tutorials. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying don't do it all the time. If all you're doing is delivering more information, more information, more information, you're doing a couple things. You're either overwhelming your audience, you're tricking them into thinking they have everything they need, or you're making them feel like I have enough for now. I don't need to buy them anything from them. I'm just going to implement the free. Those are usually what's going to happen when you keep delivering more and more information, which by the way, if you truly have a product or a skill that can help people, that's one of the worst things you can do for them, right? How many of you guys have, have done a webinar and then all of a sudden you get all these people who are like, great, that's awesome. And then they, they leave and you're sitting there going like, wait, there's so much more. You, you, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. You're not seeing underneath and they just leave. Well, that's a result of really bad messaging and you're leaving them into a worse spot because now they think they have everything they need when they actually don't, okay? So here's some other ways to add value. You guys can shift people's perspective. This means get them to see something differently, get them to see something in a way they've never seen it before. You can validate experiences, emotions, identities, beliefs, and values. This one is huge. And it's so underrated and undertapped. There's a person that does this really well online. I talk about her all the time, the holistic psychologist. You can follow her on Instagram. Most of her content does this. That's another way to add value. Make people feel heard, validated, like they're not alone, that someone finally gets them and understands them. It's a massive way to add value, not only in content, but even in your own personal relationships. It's huge. And it's huge when it comes to online content. Again, this is how humans are actually formed. This is how humans process information, okay? Another way is to explain the unexplained. If you don't know what that means, we'll definitely get there at some point, but go ahead and write it down for now. We need, another way to add value is connection and acceptance, which by the way, all of these are also required in order to drive a sale. You need connection. People need to trust you. People need three types of trust. They need to trust you as a human, which is done with connection. They need to trust your ability to solve their problem. If they don't trust your ability to solve the problem, they'll never buy from you. And then number three, they need to trust their own ability to solve the problem with your help. That's why delivering information does such a disservice because if you overwhelm people, they lose complete trust in their own ability to solve the problem. You need all three of those things happening. And then the next one is awareness. So what do I mean when I say awareness? Um, does anyone know? Let's open up the chat real quick. Does anyone know what I mean when I say awareness? What does awareness actually mean? We can open up the chat. Let's see if anyone knows. While we're doing that, I'm gonna go to the board and I'm gonna write two things down. It says, does anyone know what I mean when I say awareness? And what we're going to do here in a second is I'm going to need an example. So I want someone, while you guys are doing that, to write a problem that you solve in the chat. We're going to do a live example here. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when I say awareness, okay? So does anyone know what I mean when I say awareness? And is it Sarah said jab, jab, right hook? Yes, but no. I think Gary's, and I can't say anything bad about Gary because he's obviously done an amazing job, but the jab, jab, right hook, you have to understand Gary's not selling courses and services like we are. So I want to be very clear. When I say, when you say jab, jab, right hook, jab, 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 you have to be careful what those jabs are. Jab, jab, jab doesn't mean more information, more information, give, give, give. It means add value in one way, add value in another way, add value in another way, add value in another way then all of a sudden it's like you start to get sales, okay? So we wanna re just remember that. So uh, let's go to the board here and I'm gonna pick a problem. So I don't see anything in chat. I know there's a little bit of a delay, but I'm, I'll do one example here and then we'll go back to the chat. So here's what I mean when I say awareness. So let's pretend for a minute you're a weight loss coach, right? And let's say you work with, with moms after they give birth, okay? And it's been six months after the baby and they have, let's just, and I'm making this up. I don't even know if this is true. They just aren't losing weight. In fact, they might be gaining weight, okay? So let's say they're gaining weight when trying to lose weight.
Okay? So they have a problem. There's a problem that they're experiencing. In all of your audience, they have problems. That's why they're going to buy from you. So what's going to happen is there's a problem. That's what the P stands for. There's a problem. Okay? So P stands for problem. And the first thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to start thinking about what problems do you actually solve for people? Because the problems are going to be the root of everything. It's going to be the root of your content. It's going to be the root of the titles. It's going to be the root of your messaging. I would say 70 to 80% of all of your messaging should be coming from problems. Even the benefits and transformation you give should be the opposite of the problem. And most of you guys probably are like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But when we look at it, we go, here's all the actual real problems my audience is dealing with. What's the opposite of that? We get much deeper, richer, more powerful benefits than we would have come up with on our own, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next thing, actions. So if your audience has problems, there's something that's either causing the problem or there's something they're trying to do to fix the problem that doesn't work. So I'm going to look at this and say gaining weight uh, when trying to lose weight. And then I'm going to ask myself, what actions are they doing to try to fix it that's not working? What are they doing that's like to try to fix this? I'm going to say they're probably uh, dieting or doing things that they used to do in their 20s, like working out harder. Okay? Now, here's, here's why this is so important. If someone has this problem, and by the way, you want to pick problems that they know that they have, do not pick problems they don't know they have. A lot of people like to do that. This has to be a problem they're aware of. And then what we're going to do is look at, well, what are they doing to try to fix it? And we're going to go, okay, they're dieting, and they're trying to work out really hard and really intensely when it's actually more of a hormone issue. Their hormones are, are imbalanced because of the delivery of the baby, because they just had a baby. They're in postpartum. The, the hormones are actually what keep the, the fat stored and the weight on. And so what I'm going to look at is go, okay, this is what they're doing, but guess what? They are not aware that this doesn't work. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. If your audience knew that this didn't work, they wouldn't do it. If your audience knew that this was causing the problem, they wouldn't do it. If you want powerful messaging, make them aware, so make them aware of the things they're not aware of. When someone is not seeing results with their content and performing and doing really good information, putting out really good information, they are not aware that delivering information isn't what sells, right? That's one of the hooks that I like to use in my ads and my messaging. It's probably one of the hooks that got you here, which is more information isn't selling. You've been putting out really good information and it's not working. There's a problem. I made you aware that that doesn't work. And then when I say things like Gary Vaynerchuk and Brene Brown, they don't do tutorials and deliver more and more information, yet they're growing. Your mind starts to go, oh my God, I never realized that before. When you can get your audience to go, I never realized that before and it makes sense, that's extremely powerful. Your ads will skyrocket. Your content engagement will skyrocket. Your sales will skyrocket. One of the major things I started doing with my messaging is started to focus on how do I raise my audience's awareness? How do I make them aware of mistakes that they're making that they don't know they're making that are causing the problem? And how do I make them aware of mistakes they're making to try to fix the problem that don't work? Not only that, but there's something else going on. When you can do this and you do it correctly, you gain something else. There's something else that we gain that is hyper important, extremely important. In fact, I didn't even know the importance of this to the level I do now until about a year ago. I kind of stumbled onto this by, by a mistake. Then when you can nail that, you have the right problems down, the right language, and people go, oh my God, that's exactly what I'm experiencing. That's exactly what I'm dealing with. And you start saying, well, you're probably doing this, this, and this. And they're like, yeah, I am doing that. And they're like, that's what's causing it. And they're like, oh my God. 
how do you know this? Like, how did you know exactly what I was doing? How did you know exactly what I was experiencing? What we start to gain is relevancy. Relevancy is hyper, hyper, extremely important. Because what relevancy does is it gets your audience to go, oh my God, that's me. He's t- he or she is talking about me. This is for me. I need to register. This is the exact problem, the exact thing I'm doing. These are the exact actions to take and try to fix it. How the heck does this person know this? Relevancy is one of the most important things we need with messaging. And I can tell you right now, if you have messaging problems or you have a messaging issue, it's because the way in which you're communicating, the audience is looking at it and saying, I don't need that. That's not relevant to me. I don't see why that's important to me. Because here's the truth, guys. If the audience understood the importance of your teachings, of your content, of your ad, of your webinar, they would freaking be there. But if they're not registering, they're not watching, they're not commenting, they don't see how what you are saying is relevant to them in their situation. And I'm also willing to bet that if you're here and you're live with us and you registered, there's something I said in my communication that was relevant to you in your situation, relevant to your problem, relevant to what you're trying to gain. Can I just get some yeses and nos in the chat box if that is true? Have, there, have you felt some sort of relevancy by being here? And I know there's a little bit of a delay. Five or 10 seconds, okay. So yes, have what I've been saying, has it been relevant to you? Maybe it's the ad, maybe it's the email, maybe it's everything. Right. A lot of yeses. I feel it. Yes. And that was intentional because I know exactly what you're doing. I know exactly what your guys' problem is. And I know all the different ways it's going to show up. I know how it's going to show up inside of content. I know it's going to show up inside of ads, inside of emails, inside of webinars, inside of... I know exactly what all the problems are that you're going to experience. I also know why they're happening. I know what's causing it. I know the mistakes that you're trying to make. And I also know what most of you guys are trying to do to fix the problem. And hopefully what you guys realized is in the first half of today's presentation, there were, obviously there were some comments. You're always going to get comments from some people who get impatient and like, just get to it, just get to it, just get to it. And they probably left and they're about to miss the information I'm going to give you guys here. So luckily you're still here. What I was doing in the first half of the presentation was building relevancy, was making you feel understood making you feel heard, reassuring you that you're in the right place, reassuring you that I understand the problem, reassuring I understand your situation, reassuring you of all of that stuff. I was also adding value by letting you know here's the mistakes that you need to stop doing. I was shifting your perspective. Can you guys see that? Yeses and nos in the chat box. Can you guys see now how I open up day number one? It was very intentional, and I do that with every presentation we do. Our last three launches have done over a million dollars in sales. Why? Because of the ability to be able to build relevancy. And it's extremely, extremely important. Cool, a bunch of yeses. Love it. Amazing. Cool. And that's what I love about doing these presentations. You guys get to see a lot of this stuff love live in action. Cool. All right, so let's keep going. We'll throw the slides back up. Um, but this is an exercise that you guys can do on your own. This is an exercise that you could um, do all the time. I still do this. I do this all the time still to today in my own business. I still constantly am looking for new problems and new actions and new mistakes because there's always going to be a new strategy, a new thing that someone's going to be doing. So I'm always trying to keep my finger on the pulse. But this is what I'm doing is I'm being intentional um, with being, building relevancy with you guys. Okay. So messaging fix number two is we need a deeper focus on what we're saying and how we're saying it. So there's a difference, what you say and how you say it, okay? And now what most people do, and guys, this is just a human trait that we have. Most of us speak from our own perspective. We live life as if our perspective is truth, as if that's the way it is. We might, and in fact, We all do it with our friends, our family, our spouses, our kids. This is just the way we communicate. And I'm willing to bet the way you've communicated your whole life is probably how you're communicating within your brand. So part of this whole journey of learning communication has actually stemmed a lot of, a lot of it from my kids, my, my wife and my own experience dealing with people. I'm like, wow, that didn't, that didn't really get the result I wanted. I wanted my kid to clean his room, but the way I communicated that got him to yell at me. That's weird. 
right? So I'm like, let's figure out a different way to communicate. So you have to figure out what is it that you want to communicate, and then you have to figure out how do I communicate this so I get the result that I want, okay? So let's dig in. Let's start with the what. What do you communicate? How many of you, and if the chat's not on, we can turn it back on. How many of you guys have had an experience where you get a kid a toy and then they just play with the box? How many of you guys have, have had that experience? I know I've had that experience. When we moved here to Flagstaff, all of our toys and stuff were, they were in storage. And I, if you guys haven't moved cross country, basically when you have a mover and they take all of your stuff and they store it for you and you say, hey, I want it delivered on the state, legally they have like three weeks to deliver it to you. So you could be in your new place for three weeks without any furniture. That was us and my kids every day. Where are my toys, where are my toys at? When are my toys gonna get here? Dad, where's our toys at? Well, the day came. Toys finally came, all these boxes were all over the place. There were boxes everywhere, right? All their toys were right there. We had a little bonus playroom for them. Put it in the bonus playroom, guess what? They didn't play with their toys at all. They played with all the freaking moving boxes. <clears throat> Had I known that's what they wanted, I would just gone to Home Depot and bought them a bunch of boxes two weeks ago. But the point I'm making is that they said they wanted their toys when all they really wanted was the boxes. What they really wanted was to be creative, to build forts, to be outside, right? These are the things they wanted something new. That's what they really wanted. So their words said something, but their behavior said something else. How many of you guys have gotten a gift for a spouse? Some of you already know what story I'm going to tell. This is one that really shows how human I am and how embarrassing I can, like how embarrassing I can be. So how stupid I can be. But how many of you guys have actually gotten a gift for your spouse and it just like didn't work? Like it was just terrible. Like they didn't like it, even though they said they wanted it didn't work out. That was me. So a couple years ago, long time ago, I've learned since then, probably in my 20s, uh, my wife said, I, I didn't get my wife a Christmas present. So there I am on the 23rd, 24th, going to Target, about to get a Christmas present, which by the way, that's mistake number one. Don't do that. Husbands out there, don't do that. Okay. Do not get, <laughs> go to Target, especially on the 24th, to look for a present for your wife. But there I am going through, what do, what do I get? What do I get? Da, 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 where am I? And I go to the section where all the vacuums are. And I remember my wife telling me, oh, I wanted that Dyson vacuum. The one with, you guys remember that? The one with the ball on it, maybe commercials 20 years ago, 10 years ago, where like go around the corners and stuff, all these sharp turns and all that stuff, right? So I was like, perfect. She said she wanted it. I'm going to get it. It's expensive. She's going to love it. And then I wrap it up, and then on Christmas Day, she opens it up. I'm thinking, I nailed this thing. Like, oh, I'm going to get all the points in the world. And I could just see the look on her face go from like to, and I realized I totally messed up. And what I realized through these experiences is that what people say they want isn't always what they actually want. And it's the same thing with your audience. Remember when I talked about conscious versus subconscious? Consciously, people will say, yeah, this is what I want, and this is what I want over here, and I want this, da 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 I want more of that. And then when you give it to them, it's not actually what they want. However, when I look at the behavior, when I look at my kids' behavior, what do they actually want? Well, they wanted a fort. They wanted to go play. They wanted to be creative. They wanted to be outside. They wanted something new, right? That's what their behavior showed me they wanted. And if I'm smart enough to pay attention to their behavior, their behavior will always tell me exactly what they want. If I was to look at my wife, like maybe I would look at like her search history on her computer or like whatever catalog she's ordering in the, coming to her in the mail or, or whatever she's looking at when we go to the mall, right? Her behavior that she doesn't know I'm watching, if I become conscious of that and I start watching her behavior, it will literally tell me what she wants. It will tell me subconsciously what they want. The people's behavior, and this is the, one, the biggest lesson I want to leave you guys with, one of them is... When we survey, we're asking people what they want and it's not always what they actually want. So when we look at serving our audience for content topics or messaging or words or this or that, it's not always gonna lead us to the best results. And it goes back to the Henry, quote, uh, Henry Ford quote, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. So what we wanna do is we wanna stop 
guessing at what your audience wants. So if you want to figure out what to post, what to talk about, what to do your launch on, what to do your webinar on, stop guessing. Stop surveying people. Again, surveys can help and they can reveal really great information, especially if start, you start seeing patterns inside of surveys. So I'm not saying to not survey. I'm just saying don't blindly follow whatever people tell you in the surveys because it's going to lead you to bad messaging in most cases. And so what we have to realize is sometimes people's thinking is off, but their behavior won't be. Their behavior will literally tell you what to talk about more, what's working, what's resonating, what's relevant, and what isn't. So everything from topics to titles to words to phrases to pain points to benefits, all of that stuff will be revealed in their behavior. And then let's go ahead and turn the chat off real quick. And we're going to keep going. I'll bring the chat back on in a second. But you have to understand Everything that your audience is doing is subconsciously driven and you guys do the same thing. So most of you, when you guys are watching content online, you're not making a conscious decision. Should I keep watching? Should I stop? Should I keep going? Should I click over here? It's subconscious. It's like, let me swipe. Okay, I'm watching it. And you, it's an automatic feeling of this is relevant and entertaining to me or it's not. And if it's not, then you swipe. But you're not consciously thinking about it. You're not going like, is this going to be worth my time? <sighs> what makes this funny? Is it funny? No, it's just... Da, 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 da. Same thing with clicking on ads. You read it and you're not like, hmm, is this going to be worth my time? Is it not? It's like, wow, that was really good or that was really relevant. Let me opt in. These are all automatic decisions that you're making. So even you make most of your decisions online to watch content, to click on ads, to attend things that are live. You make those decisions subconsciously and your audience is as well, which means if you're not getting the results you want, there's something off, okay? Now, my wife and I were watching stand-up comedy last night, and it was really funny. And it was really funny because that comic was really relevant to us. He talked about being married for a lot of years, the, the pain points, the, having, like, uh, the funny things that happen inside of marriages, kids. But what made that funny and what makes almost all stand-up comedy really funny is how relevant it is to you. How many times have you watched your favorite comic and you're like slapping your spouse or your partner or your boyfriend, girlfriend or your friend. You're like, oh my God, that's you. Oh my gosh, like, oh, that's me. Oh, I would totally do that. Oh my God. It's hyper relevant to you and you automatically start to feel like this is really funny. Oh my God, I love this person, right? So you guys have to realize that this is what's happening inside of your content. If you're not doing this effectively, if you're just guessing and you're not paying attention to behavior and you're surveying, you're just hoping and getting that you're going to get lucky with your messaging, okay? So um, what do we do? What we start doing is we pay attention to our content. We, we, I want you to stop looking at your content as a way to build an audience and start looking at your content as a testing ground to find out what works. Their behavior will tell you. The likes, the comments, the shares, all of those things will literally tell you this was relevant, we like this topic, and what you'll find is there's gonna be patterns. Every time you talk about a certain topic, it just does really well. Every time you use a certain phrase, it just does really well. So this is how we start to find out what to talk about, okay? So start looking at everything you do as a test. Every email you send out, every ad you post, every piece of content you post is literally a test to see the behavior of your audience. And what you'll find is certain topics will rise to the top, certain ones won't, certain ones will go even more, and you're always just testing. But what I, what I find is when I look at my content as a test to figure out what works, my content actually gets better. Because I'm always looking at what will serve my audience more, what's gonna get to their subconscious, what is gonna get to the deep root cause of what makes them tick. And when I have that perspective on content, it just always does better. So obviously you still wanna add value and all of that stuff. So that's how we figure out the what, okay? So what we wanna talk about now is the how. How do we say it? And this is probably, honestly, is the most important piece of it. We have to be intentional with how we are communicating with our audience. So most people just get up and they start teaching and they list benefits that you're gonna experience with them and they just like teach, teach, teach because that's all they know to do and then they don't get the results they want, and they're like, what's going on? Well, you're not really intentional with what you're doing or what you're saying. And it's not your fault, like you just, no one's ever told you that or taught you how to do it. So even when I teach, 
I have a process, like inside of New Generation Mastery, we have a whole thing called a persuasive tutorial, which is literally how to do a tutorial and teach, but also build relevancy, create demand, pull people in, teach at the same time, and also get their subconscious to go, oh my God, this makes so much sense, I could do it. In fact, I'm gonna be using the persuasive tutorial today, tomorrow, and on day three. I'm gonna be using it all three days, okay? So that's all in there, and we, I'm going to show you guys how to start doing this as well. But I'm going to give you guys a couple examples. So if I wanted my son to clean his room, I could say, hey, Will, go clean your room and do it now because I'm your dad. Or I could say, hey, Will, Superman cleaned his room in five minutes. Can you beat Superman? Which one do you think is going to get better results? Probably the second one, right? So it's the same what. The what is I want Will to clean his room. The how is different. We need the what and the how to be dialed in. Another way to communicate this is I could say, hey, Will, I see you have Legos all over your floor. I actually stepped on one earlier today and really hurt my foot. I'm really concerned that your sisters might come in and hurt their feet. And so because I don't want people to get hurt, do you think you can clean up these Legos? Which way do you guys think is going to be better, one or two, right? So I just gave you a couple different ways on the how to change it around so we get a much different result. Again, it's the same thing with your audience. Guys, there are literally subconscious triggers you can use in your titles, in your content. There's different types of content. There's different ways to sell. There's different ways to teach that all go and focus on the how. That's what New Generation Mastery does. Our program opening up next week does all of this. All the language patterns, all the processes, all the title things that you need, all the triggers, all the messaging elements you're gonna need for everything in your brand is right there for you. And the reason why we do that is because of this. I want you to learn how to communicate in a way that your audience goes, oh my God, that's me, and I want them to do it automatically. I want them to think, that's me, I can do this, I trust this person, this person has the secret, I want them all of it, right? So another, another example, I could go to someone and say, hey guys, go download this thing, do it now, do it now. Or I could even say something as simple as like, can you just do me the biggest favor in the world? I'd be so grateful if you just helped me out. Like, which style do you think is gonna get a better result? And a lot of the times when we speak, when we communicate, it's all automatic. Like how many of you guys, let's just open up the chat real quick. How many of you guys before today within built a funnel or a launch or an evergreen and have literally said, okay, let me be very intentional with the headline here. Let me, like, how do I teach this in a way that's going to get them to understand for everything inside of your brand, everything inside of your funnel. And not only have you been able to think that and been super intentional, but actually knew what to do and how to say it so that it did actually land. I'm willing to bet most of you probably haven't because the way in which we talk, the way in which we communicate is their automatic patterns that we have going on inside of our head. That's, and I'm willing to bet the way you've been communicating with your audience is probably the way you've been communicating your whole life. Um, so I know there's still a delay. Let's, don't worry about turning the chat off. It's okay. We'll, we'll keep going. Um, okay. Let's give you another example. Um, this one <laughs> is from... Uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Rachel Duffy, I'm gonna steal it from her. She was um, a coach of ours, then became head coach for us, and then now is our COO. But she had a business um, back in the day, conscious parenting business, helping parents have better relationships with their kids. So when I first started working with her years ago, um, she would have a lot of messaging of like, hey parents, do you wanna regulate your nervous system? And I'd be like, Rachel, why, why do they wanna regulate their nervous system? And she's like, because that's, that's what actually gets them to stop yelling at their kids. And so what Rachel was doing is she's focusing so much on the solution. The solution was regulating the nerve, your nervous system. But I was like, Rachel, how many parents actually know that they're yelling at their kids because their system, nervous system is not regulated? She's like, oh, I don't think any of them do. I'm like, so your messaging not landing because you're talking solution when they don't even realize they need the solution. So I said, what do they actually want? What are they dealing with? And she's like, well, the kids aren't listening. And then they have to yell at their kids in order to get your kids to listen. And then they feel guilty every night. And then every night they're sitting there telling their, themselves, I'm not going to yell at my kids tomorrow. And I said, great, that, that's the messaging. That's what we need. So instead, the ad should say something like, have you noticed you yell at your kids and it's automatic and not something you think about doing? It's all an automatic thing. Have you ever asked yourself, what 
creates that automatic yelling? And how do we stop it? And I was like, Rachel, that's much better messaging because we're speaking to where they're at. We're meeting them where they're at. I could also create an ad that said, hey, are you tired of yelling at your kids in order to get them to listen and then you feel guilty every single night and repeat it? you've been repeating this pattern for six months? Like that's the message we need because that's where they're at. That's the problem. The problem isn't that their system's dysregulated. You're speaking outside of their awareness. So we need to speak inside of their awareness. So instead of saying you yell at your kids because your nervous system's regulated, stop explaining things to them. Make them feel heard, understood, build relevancy, and then you can slowly bring them to a point where it's about the nervous system, okay? Uh, another example is how-to content is terrible. I could have just got up here and said, hey guys, how-to content's terrible. You need to stop doing it. Or I could say, if you're stuck, it may be because you're doing too much how-to content. If we look at Gary Vay Vaynerchuk, Mel Robbins, Brene Brown, they're building amazing audiences without how-to. That's a much more effective way of explaining it. Why is it more effective? The reason why this is, this, these other options are more effective is because it doesn't require you to think or, sh or, or um, yeah, it just doesn't require you to think in order to understand what I'm saying. If I just got up here and said, how do content's terrible? I'm just hoping that you believe me because I'm the one talking. But if I said, how to content might be why you're stuck, if we look at the best people out there, Gary Vaynerchuk, Brene Brown, Mel Robbins, they're building amazing audiences and scaling and they're not using how to, there's no arguing with that. That's just the truth. But it, I explain it in a way that gets you to come to your own conclusion. Oh, yeah, that's true. Whereas if I said it the first way, hey guys, how to content's terrible. I'm now battling your beliefs. You believe how-to content is the way, or most people do, right? That you think it's the right way, and then I'm saying it's the wrong way, and then now we have a battle of beliefs, and that person's gonna leave because they don't believe the same thing I believe. But because I communicated and I focused on how to communicate it, and I focused on this way over here, now there's no battling of beliefs. People go, oh my God, I never saw that before. And that is powerful. That's what I want to teach you guys. This is why the how is so important. This is why we spend so much time working on it inside of New Generation Mastery is I want you to learn the how and I want it to be like the backside of your hand. For me, communicating that way is like the backside of my hand. Now I just know how to do it. I know the patterns. I know where to go. I did it. I just, I know it. A lot of our students are the same exact way, okay? So when this is dialed in, when you have the right what, and you have the right how, here's how you guys can start to identify if your messaging is on point. If this is not happening for you, I can tell you guys your messaging's off. So you can tell that things are starting to shift and change when you start to get DMs from people asking how do I work with you, okay? Or any details on your offer. Again, it doesn't happen, have to happen a lot, but it should be happening from time to time. Engagement on your content every time you post especially with cold traffic, meaning every time you post an ad or do something, it's working, right? That's how you know it's, it, the, the, your messaging's on point. You have people waiting for your trainings and <clears throat> instead of trying to convince and hope that they show up. Like today, we had a lot of people like, oh, I'm so excited for day one. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. That means the messaging's working because people are excited to attend instead of you trying to convince and pull and get people in. It's, very, it's just very tiring, right? Um, when people start to leave you comments that their mind was blown, so if you've never heard, oh my God, I never realized that before, or my mind was blown, or how are you inside, my, inside of my head? If you're not getting those comments, your messaging is off. You should be getting those comments to some degree. And then when you, have, when you do your sales mechanism or launch, you have people saying like, take my money, open up card already, come on, just let us join. That means you have really great messaging. Um, when you add value instead of giving, uh, add value by removing beliefs and shifting perspective, and people are like, wow, I never saw that before, I never realized that before. That's another form of great messaging. Um, when, this is a huge one, guys. When people start to repeat back what they hear you say, that's a major sign that your messaging's landing because it's literally ingrained in them, right? So when you start hearing people use different like identities or trigger words or trigger phrases that we teach inside of New Generation uh, Mastery, or they just even repeat back your teachings or this or that or whatever, then you know your messaging is working. When people tell you I love your work, when they refer to what you do as your work, 
instead of just saying, oh, I love your content, I love this, when they literally say your work, it means you're, you're creating content and explaining it in a way they've never heard before. You're raising a, their awareness, you're getting them to learn things that they never learned before. And by the way, guys, anybody can do that. If you're sitting there going like, Brandon, I have no idea how to do it, that's fine, I haven't taught you guys how to do it yet. We also teach you how to do that inside of New Generation Mastery. Anybody can do it, but you have to pull out the right elements in order to do that, okay? And we'll start doing that on day, day two especially. Um, you start to feel better, you feel more clear, you have more confidence in what you're saying. A lot of you probably hear because you have a lack of clarity. You're like, I don't understand how to explain what it is I do in a way that gets people to go like, yes, I need that. That should be gone when you have great messaging, okay? So when these things start to work, you're gonna start seeing results like this. We have people that are like, oh my gosh, I get all these DMs overnight. I start getting um, higher conversion rates. Uh, I got all of these shares. Look how many shares I got. Look how many saves I got. This person had 42 saves. This person right here on the screen was not getting anything happening on the content. And then, boom, changed the way in which you communicated a certain topic. And then all of a sudden, 42 saves on an Instagram post. This one, 104 saves. It's just over and over. Another 300 followers in, in two hours. Guys, when we say the right things in the right way, we start seeing content get picked up in algorithms. We start seeing your audience respond to things differently. We get higher open rates. Even Rose, who came into New Generation Mastery a couple years ago, um, put her on track of doing her first seven-figure year, and now she's in multiple seven figures. In 30 days, just by changing the way she talked, she was at $46,000 a month, then 58, then 89, then $106,000 by month four, just by changing the way in which she communicates. Nothing else changed. No change in the strategy, no change in the ads, nothing. Okay, and again, the results are over and over and over again. So when your messaging is working, we start to get eyeballs on us, meaning that you see more people stopping the newsfeed and checking your stuff out, more people opening up the emails and not scrolling past it on their phone or whatever it is. Then what happens is now we keep the eyeballs on us, and then when the eyeballs are on us, we have to learn how to create demand. This is a very simple process to look at your messaging. How do I get the eyeballs on me? Guys, that starts with titles, using the right triggers in your titles, the right messaging elements in your titles, not using bland titles like everyone else. That's how we get eyeballs on us. Use subconscious triggers, okay? Number two, we need to keep the eyeballs on us. So now when you start explaining and talking or writing or whatever it is, it has to be written in a way where people feel like this is relevant to me. That's what I'm going through. I'm gonna get something out of this. Oh my gosh, and, you, and then what happens is we start to create demand. So now we have to learn how to create demand at the same time, okay? It's very simple. Those are the three things that we need. Now the messaging fix number three, and this one's really important, this is one that most people skip and most people don't even realize they need, is you bend too much to the external world. I see this destroy messaging all, of, all over the place. When we look at people like Lewis Howes, Mel Robbins, Simon Sinek, David Goggins, Brene Brown, holistic psychologist, Gary Vaynerchuk, what's something they all have in common? And by the way, I don't care how you guys feel about these people. Do you, they, there might be someone on the screen you're like, I don't like that person. It doesn't matter. They all have followings bigger than most of us, okay? They all know what they're doing. They've all used content to build multi seven, eight-figure brands. They all have massive followings, bestsellers. There's no arguing. So whether you like them or not, doesn't matter. But they all have something in common. They don't use tutorials in order to build their audience. Yes, we can still use tutorials, but they're doing something else. But more importantly, what they're doing is they're connecting with their audience based on who they are. They're not sacrificing who they are. They're remembering more of who they are. They're not letting the external world control them. They're not sitting there going like, well, my parents told me I'm gonna be this, so I'm gonna go and do it, right? Or they're not saying like, well, this is what I think will make the sales, or this is what I think people want, or this is who I think I should work with, or they're not saying like, well, these are the people that keep coming to me, so I might as well just work with these people even though I don't want to. They're not backing down from their message. They're not doing any of that. What they do is they embrace their values, they embrace their beliefs, and they embrace their identities. We're gonna talk about these three things tomorrow, or sorry, on, on Wednesday, day number two, very heavily. These three things are what build connection with your audience. And I'll say this again on day number two, but I want you to think about someone you really connect with. 
And I want you to understand you didn't have to think about whether or not you connected with them. You just did. Best friend, spouse, whatever. Why? Why did you connect with them? You connected with them because you had a similar value, belief, or identity as them. For me, the only people I really hang out with are entrepreneurs or parents. That's just who I normally hang out with because those are the two strongest identities that I have right now in this time of my life. But I don't hang out with just any entrepreneur or just any parent. I hang out with ones that also have very similar values and beliefs to me. If I saw a parent who was an entrepreneur and he or she didn't care about her employees and treated them like crap and didn't care about their family, I'm probably not going to hang out with that person because we're, even though we have same identities, we have misaligned values. And even everyone on that you guys saw on the screen there, if there was someone there that you didn't connect with, it's probably because they have different values, beliefs, and identities. Like David Goggins, for example. I don't totally connect with the guy and, and, and um, you know, follow all of his stuff, but I can't argue with the fact that he's creating something awesome for, for people that are like him. You know, it's a little too extreme for me. I, I like a little bit more balance in my life, especially when I have three kids, right? But he's connecting based off of who he is. It doesn't matter my feeling on it. He's sitting there going, this is who I am. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to put it out to the world. I'm not going to bend to the external world. And whoever is like me, you come along this journey with me. And this is when we start to build an audience of the people that are like us. This is when we start to build an audience of the best people. So if you're sitting there going like, I can't attract the right people. I have the worst people coming in. I always get these haters. I just get people that never buy. It's because you aren't embracing who you are inside of your brand. Because if you were and you're doing it correctly, you would have an army of people that love you for you, that love your message for you. So what I want you guys to realize, and this is one of the most important things, because I can teach you all the language patterns, I can teach you all the frameworks, I can teach you the how to communicate all day long. But if you're going in a direction that is not aligned with you, does not sit well with you, is not within your dharma, was not within your purpose, it doesn't matter. And guys, I've worked with 3,000 course creators over the last 11 years. This is one of the most, I don't think there's a lot of truths in this world, but this is a truth for sure. This is as close to a truth as you're ever going to get. If you're in a personal brand, meaning you're the face of your company, and you're trying to put out content and build an audience in something that is not aligned with you, or where you really want to be, or what you really want to do, it's not going to work no matter how many words I tell you to do. If you're not in alignment, you're not going in the direction you want, if you're doing it for someone else, you're saying things because you're, you think that's what's going to get an audience, it won't work. I've seen this time and time again. I have, to this day, have never seen someone move forward in a business that they didn't want to do where they are the face of the brand, and that's the key. If they're the face of the brand and they move forward in that direction and they don't want to do it anymore, it won't work. And what you guys have to realize is you are the light that will attract the audience. You have to remember this. This is one of the biggest parts of messaging. Yes, there's right structures and frameworks and ways and triggers and all of this stuff. There's all of that structure that we need. Whoops. That's all the structure we need. But a great big part of messaging, especially in this space, is a lot of this invisible stuff that we cannot see. You have to be able to express the things you want to express, be who you are. You know, there, I, for those of you who don't know, I cuss from time to time. And there was someone last year, I think I dropped an F-bomb or something on one of the presentations, and she emailed in, and she said, I love what Brandon does. I really like him. I know he can help me solve the problem that I have, but I just don't align with the cussing. It's just not me. It's a mix, mix match of, of mix, mix, mix match, mix match, whatever, of values. So I'm going to bow out and I wish you guys the best of luck. And the team told me and I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm not her person. I'm not the person she wants to learn from on this topic. And that's totally fine. And I said, and honestly, I don't want her to come in because I want her to, to align with me. And if she doesn't align with me, then just go somewhere else. So this is really important because what this does is it allows you to attract the right people into your audience and build the deepest connection you can. And you have a sea of just raving fans who love you for you. 
And everyone wants that. Everyone wants a family, a spouse, friends that accept them for who they are. And you are going to want an audience of people who accept you for you. You don't want to build it off of this stuff, off of this fakeness, right? I want you to remember who you are and be the light. That's where true power comes in. Say what you want to say. I will teach you how to say it, but the message has to come from you. You are literally the light that will track the audience. You get to pick whoever you want in your audience. It's up to you. It's not up to anything else but you. So you guys need to remember that. Again, we talked about this already, but look at your best friend. How did you connect with them? Was it automatic? Probably. And it's automatic because of values, beliefs, and identities. Anytime you guys have friends or a friend group for a really long time and, and all of a sudden the friend group just falls apart or you're not friends with them anymore, I guarantee you it's because there is a shift in someone's values, beliefs, and identities. And I'll tell you guys this. My wife and I, we had a group of friends since high school. I still love them to this. I still hang out with them every once in a while. But that friend group, when we were in our 20s and through college, we were like, this friend group's never going to die. Even to our 30s, like, this friend group's never going to die. But it started to die. We, my wife and I, started to not really get invited to a lot of those things, or we just didn't feel like we even wanted to go to a lot of those things. There was two things that happened. Number one, I started to become more successful. Number two, we started to have kids. Now, my friends didn't say, oh, you're successful. We don't align with you anymore. What started to happen is in order to be successful, I had to change who I was. I had to change how I showed up, which means I judged people less. I had more compassion in my heart. I started to work on myself. We started to realize every time we hung out that friend group, again, no no judgment or anything on them. It's just the way it was. They would complain about their jobs or they would, you know, talk about um, judging other people and these sorts of things. I can't believe this person did that and that and my work over here. And my wife and I were like, man, we're just, I just don't resonate with that anymore. And it was, there was no fight or anything. We're just like, yeah, we'll just hang out with them a little bit less. And then we started to have kids and they didn't have kids. So our identity started to shift. And so our friend group started to split away. And again, there was no harsh breakup or we hate you. No, it's just like, ah, I just don't really resonate. I'd rather hang out with these people more. And it just kind of slowly shifted. But that's what happens. That's the power when you guys understand the root. Remember I told you we're going to go to the roots? This is the root. Most people are going to tell you, hey, you need to build connection. You need to build the know, like, and trust. How many times have we heard that? Go build the know, like, and trust. No one tells you how to do it. This is the root, guys. These are the roots. What I'm teaching you is the roots and the foundation of everything. Values, beliefs, and identity. This is connection content. We're going to talk about this very heavily on day number two. It's powerful, okay? A lot of those videos I showed you with all those shares, a lot of that was connection content. I'll show you guys exactly how to do that on day number two. Okay, so again, All of those examples, the David Goggins, the Lewis Howes, the Mel Robbins, uh, Brene Brown, they all connect based on who they are, their values, their beliefs, their identities. They don't bend to the external world. They also teach by shifting perspective, leaning into their beliefs, knowing here's where you are and you're thinking, I'm going to move you over here to this higher level of thinking. They share their knowing and their mastery over their craft. They add value in multiple ways. They're not adding value just through information. They're adding value in so many different ways. Now, let's open up chat real quick. And I always love asking this question. It makes me really nervous to ask you this question because the answer could be no. But how many of you guys feel like we've added value to you in some way? Like you've gained something, you've gotten some sort of value out of today's presentation. Just put yeses and no in the chat box. Yes, no, maybe so. Every time we've done this, we've always gotten yeses. I've never gotten an overwhelming amount of no's. So I'm always like, oh man, here we go. Put me on the spot. But how many of you would say we added some sort of value today? And I know there's a little bit of delay, so just wait for for the delay to catch up to me. Um, And I'm hoping it's a bunch of yeses. It is. Okay, I'm not seeing on my end, but I see yeses. And Matt's letting me know there's a lot of yeses there. Okay, great. Do we have any no's there? So I can call that person out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, Susie from Europe, you said no. You're out of here. No. Um, okay. A bunch of yeses. Cool. I'm sure it'll pop up on my screen here in a second. But what I want you guys to realize is I didn't actually teach you what to do at all. I didn't give you a step-by-step tutorial. I didn't give you um, a framework. You're going to be leaving today going like, oh my gosh, I have so much of a better understanding of what's going on. I see things differently now. 
probably is another thing you're going to be left with. You might be left with, I now see what I was doing wrong. You might be looking at this going, I see a path forward now. I can see what I need to start doing. But the point I'm making is that I didn't actually teach you how to do anything. What I did was I erased, I raised your awareness to stuff. I added value to, to you guys in different ways other than just delivering information. Okay? So put, um, put eyeball in the chat if you can see that. Can you see that? Just put eyeball in the chat if you can see that. If you can see the fact that I added value in a lot of different ways, I built relevancy, I shifted your perspective, I got you to see something, write the word eyeball in the chat. Or just I, whatever, whatever's easier for you. Um, so let's go, eyeball, eyeball, ton of eyeballs, I love it. <laughs> Someone used the emoji of the eyeball, I freaking, freaking love it. Now this is, and I do wanna set the stage, day two and day three, we are gonna get into the what? To do. Like, I'm gonna show you what to do. We're gonna talk on day number two, we're gonna talk about the four quadrants of content you need, the four areas of messaging. I'm gonna show you how to start doing it. I'm gonna give you guys some frameworks. But what I love doing, opening this three day presentation, is adding so much value to you without ever telling you what to do. To show you guys the power in effective communication with effective messaging and show you and prove to you there are multiple ways to add value inside of your audience's life that you're not tapping into yet that will make your presentations, your content, your ads blow the freak up. Normally I would have dropped an F-bomb there, I'm keeping it PG this time so we don't get any more emails of people leaving because <laughs> they don't like my F-bombs. So with that being said, let's go back real quick to the slide. So what they're doing and what, what I'm doing, hopefully if I did my job correctly, is I added value, but I also created demand. I created demand for, for day number two. Hopefully I created demand for new generation mastery. Maybe some of you are like, yeah, I think I might wanna see what this is all about, right? But I'm adding value and creating demand at the same time. So when like, someone like Simon Sinek talks about leadership, do you think he's gonna have to beg for sales? No, he's not gonna have to beg for sales. He's probably getting people coming to him like, Seeking him out. Can you come speak here? Can you come do this? Why? Because of this content. So we're going to talk about this on day number two and three, which is on Wednesday the 20th and Friday the 22nd. But I want to sum up today. Okay? So today, um, we showed you there are other ways to add value inside of people's lives. So as a reminder, we can shift their perspectives to get them to see things they didn't see before. We raise their awareness to things they didn't believe before. We reinforce beliefs. We can talk about identities. We can talk about values. Um, we can take away things that are holding them back, revealing mistakes that they're doing that they don't realize are mistakes, explaining things that no one have ever explained to them before, ways to add value. We want to build connection with our audience. So yes, we want to be their teachers, but we also want to build connection. If you don't build connection, sales are going to be very tough. We need to build connection based off of our values, our beliefs, um, and identities. And then number three is you have to remember, we need to communicate using the what and the how. You need to know what topics are resonating with your audience and which ones aren't. You need to know what phrasing works with your audience and which one isn't. You need to know which words to use and which ones not to use. Great messaging also has great discipline. Guys, there's a million and a half things I could say about content and messaging and all of this stuff. There's a million and a half things I could say, but I'm very disciplined in only doing small amounts at the right time because I know what works, I know what resonates, I know what's relevant, and I stick there. Very disciplined, right? So communicate based on what and the how. How do we communicate it in a way that lands? And you can use your content and all of this stuff to test. There's a lot of different ways to test it, okay? So what I'm hoping for is by day number three, we start to move you up this pyramid. There's six stages of messaging evolution or involvement. Involvement's a word I made up. I know it's not a real word. It sounded cool, we're using it. But most of you are the unheard entrepreneur right now. Most of you, if you're making any of the mistakes we talked about today or have any of the problems, you're at what I would call the unheard entrepreneur level, okay? Where we wanna get you to is the new generation entrepreneur who's scaling sales consistently, have people coming to you for your unique method, teaching style, and communication style. They're coming to you for your work, they're coming to you for your teachings, 
and you've created new standards within your space, okay? All right. Um, so we have one more thing for you guys to do, a couple more things. For if you're like most people, what you're probably asking is like, Brandon, this is great. How do we start to piece this together? How do we put this into content? It's a great question, but it's not the right question. I'll show you what the right question here is in a second. Just to remind you guys, Wednesday is day number two. That's when we start to answer that question for you, okay? So day number two is clear messaging and content that attracts and builds demand. And then day number three is we're gonna talk about how to build um, sales. How do we teach and create demand? How do you start to use messaging that creates an internal desire and demand? So if you guys wanna learn how to start piecing this together, make sure you're here on day number two. It's gonna be the same time as today. And we're gonna do day number three as well. Now, most people will stop watching the series after today. They're like, okay, I got what I needed and I'm gonna leave. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys where you are on the scale of actually figuring this all out. So let's figure out where you need to focus on. What this is gonna do is to show you how big of a messaging problem you have, how good you actually have an understanding of it. So what I want you guys to do, yes, there will be replays for those of you who can't make it, is I want you guys to answer these questions and answer these honestly. And we're gonna to go to a little bit of a Q&A here in a second. But how much of your content is educational? And I want you guys to be honest. You don't need, you don't need to leave it in the chat, okay? Just write it down on a piece of paper. How much of your content's educational? If it's zero to 20%, give yourself one point. 20 to 30% is two points. 30 to 50% is three points. 50 to 70% is five points. 70 to 80 is three points. 80 to 90 is two points. 90 to 100 is one point, okay? I love how committed you guys are. Like there's a bunch of people in the chat. I'm not leaving, I'm showing up, I love it. So again, you don't have to put it in the chat if you don't want to, but go ahead and give yourself a score, one through five, how much of your content is educational, okay? Meaning you're, you're intentionally teaching something. Number two, how much of your educational content are, is tutorial? So out of all the educational content you're doing, how much of it is actually done in the form of a tutorial? Give yourself a point based off of these scores, be honest. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up all of these points, okay? It's a fun little game I like to do at the end of, of day three. Okay, so go ahead and put those in the chat, okay? Number two, what are five specific problems you solve? And you have to, if you don't know this, give yourself a really low score, <laughs> okay? If you give yourself a one, you should know this automatically. If you don't automatically rattle these off or at least one of them off, you got to give yourself a one. You have to do this under 60 seconds or, no, or less and you have to just nail it. You have to actually know it, okay? How, how many of you guys can name five specific problems you solve in under 60 seconds? By the way, this is one of the biggest problems that people have in messaging is they don't actually know the problems they solve for people. They just know their skills, their knowledge, their degrees. That's what they know they actually don't know the problems they solve. And they don't know how to say it in a way that gets people to go like, oh my God, that's me, that's what I'm dealing with. So go ahead and give yourself a score. We have two more questions for you. How many ways are you intentionally adding value? So when I post a piece of content, I'm like, okay, this piece of content is intentionally gonna add value in this way. This one is gonna add value in this way. This one's gonna add value in this way. How many ways are you intentionally adding value? value to your audience right now. Intentionally, not by accident, meaning like, oh my God, I was doing this one thing and now because I watched Brandon today, I realized that's what I'm doing. No, intentionally. How many of you are intentionally adding value in different ways? How many ways are you doing it? One, two, three, or four, or five? Last question. How clear, five being best, how clear do you feel about your content and your messaging? Give yourself a score. Now, I want you all to add it up. You can put it in the chat. I want to see how many of you, where your scores are at. Add up all the scores from all five questions and put it in the chat. And Donna, uh, I mean any form of content. I don't care if you're po podcasting, articles, videos, it doesn't matter. You're posting content for all of it, okay? So add up your scores. Let me take a little peek here. Total points, eight. Barb, thank you for being so honest. 12, 11, 13, one, four, um, 
5.5, 15. Okay, I don't know why this mouse is not working. There we go. Uh, 20, 18, 14, 14. I'm just going to see if we have any in the 20s. Does anyone have anything in the 20s? Okay. So I'm going to break down the scores for you guys. I'm going to tell you exactly. Gary got a 20. I think that's the highest so far. Good job, Gary. If you scored below a 22, you have a messaging and content problem. The best thing about this is because of the questions that I asked you, I know I can tell exactly where your messaging problem is. It could be in multiple areas. It could be in different areas. But I know exactly where your messaging problem is based off of those five questions. I've, again, I've worked with over 3,000 course creators. I can tell you right now, anyone who scored a 22 or higher, they have great messaging. And I can help them probably still. But anyone below a 22, you have the really good news is, is attending day two and attending day three is going to be incredibly powerful for you because there's a lot of room for improvement. And when we open up the doors for New Generation Mastery a week from today, the program is going to help you 2x, 3x, 5x. Because if you scored, again, below a 22, there are some major communication and messaging issues going on. And we have designed the presentation on day two and three to start addressing those, okay? So with that being said, last reminders, and we're going to do some Q&A here in a second. I want you to share your biggest breakthrough. You guys can do that right now. All you need to do is go to the Facebook group, use the hashtag. We will not see it if you do not use the hashtag or you have it incorrect. Because what we do is we go in, we do a search for the hashtag, we go through all the posts, and guys, sometimes there's hundreds of posts, okay? There's usually going to be hundreds and hundreds of posts, so we're, we're not going to, if you don't use the hashtag, we're probably not going to see it. So what we're going to do is you can go to the Facebook group, write out your biggest breakthrough. Now, I don't, I'm going to read them and I will respond. I try to respond to every single person's comment. However, my team is going to get together and they're going to pick the biggest, best breakthrough that they, they, they think um, should win, Okay. That person, not, I know it says $100 on the screen. We're actually going to give out $500 for the day one hashtag. Five, I'm 5Xing it, okay? Manifesting a 5X for you guys inside of your business using our material, but I'm also 5Xing the, the prize. So you're going to get $500, and you're going to be in the drawing to get a one-on-one -on -one session with me that we're going to stream inside the Facebook group next week, okay? Meaning I'm literally going to go through your messaging. We're going to start piecing things together. We're going to do all that. So... Go ahead and post. You guys are going to have three chances to do this because we're going to do this on day two and three as well. So if you're watching the replay, go ahead and do it. Um, <clears throat> we will pick the day one winner probably in the next 24 hours. So go ahead and, and like meaning we won't announce until the end, but we internally will know who the winner is. And also for those of you um, who want to upgrade to the VIP experience, it's 47 bucks. That ends tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day to get in VIP. You're going to get all the director's notes from day one, two, and three trainings. You're going to be able to attend extra VIP Q&A sessions we're doing starting tomorrow. Um, and you're also going to get our mini course on the PDF thing. And look, guys, I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm not getting rich off these $47 VIP experience things. This is not a money maker for us. It really isn't. What it is, is we've done this presentation to over 50,000 people, and I know the Q&A sessions can go for three, four hours sometimes. And I don't want that to have to happen today and have you guys sit here, so we're doing dedicated sessions for that. And we've also had a lot of questions come in, so we've crafted this thing to give people a little bit more, a little bit extra to help them implement, get their questions answered and all that stuff because we're here to serve you guys. Um, so we're doing that as an extra thing. It's 47 bucks. It's the lowest price thing that we have inside of our company. I'm not getting rich off it. It's literally just for you if you want it. Don't need it. Day two, one, two, and three, they're totally free. The Facebook group is totally free, but for those of you that want it, it does end tomorrow. So here's what I want to do um, because we have, I know we're going to have some questions and stuff is we are going to answer five questions today, maybe a little bit more. So what I want you to start doing, and Matt, we can do this, right? Like ask the questions and upvote. Yeah. 
Is that a possible? Okay. So what we're going to do is if you have a question on today's training, start thinking about it now. Start going through, thinking about what you want to ask. Do you have any questions on anything? Let me know. And what we want you to do is post it on, is it the Q&A section where they do that, Matt? Yeah, the question section. There's already some of some posts in there, too. Okay. Um, okay, and then we'll put the link to VIP in there, too. Someone's asking how to get VIP. Uh, if you look up, um, Joan, one comment above, Brittany gave the link to VIP if anyone wants it. So, again, there's no pressure to join, guys. It's, if you want it, great. If not, don't worry about it. We're still going to deliver everything we can on day one, two, and three, and inside that Facebook group. By the way, our coaches inside our program are inside the Facebook group answering questions and stuff too. So if you have any questions, you can always go there. Um, okay, so I'll answer Sarah's question real quick as we, as we figure out um, the Q&A thing. I'll, I'll explain it here in a second. So Sarah's saying don't battle their beliefs, and here's what I'm saying is when you know something is one way and the audience doesn't agree with you and you just make it as a statement and you're saying it as if it's true, there's gonna be a battle of beliefs. So if I just got up here today and I said, hey guys, don't use tutorials, they suck. And you believe that tutorials are great, I didn't convince you of anything. There was a battle of beliefs. We just, we just bashed our heads together and we came to a, a halt and there's, no, there's just like, you're gonna be like, I, I don't believe that, I'm out of here, right? But if I said, hey guys, don't use tutorials, they suck. If we look at like Gary Vaynerchuk and Mel Robbins and Tony Robbins and Bernie Brown, they're amazing audiences and add value inside of people's lives, but they're not using tutorials. That pattern that I just used is called counterexample. But instead of just saying my belief and expecting you to believe it because I'm the authority, we have a battle in the beliefs, but because I use the counterexample, now you go, oh man, I never, I caused you to think. It caused you to go, and you do it automatically. It caused you to go like, I never realized that before. And that is powerful because you remove your audience from a belief that's keeping them trapped. So that's what I mean with battling of beliefs. Yeah, so just to be super clear, guys, the VIP, if you did join VIP, we have a special VIP Q&A session tomorrow. It's not happening right now. What we're gonna do right now is there's gonna be a Q&A area that you can ask a question and then we're gonna have everyone vote. And I'm only gonna answer five questions today. Tomorrow, pretty much anyone who has a question will get it answered tomorrow if you're a VIP, okay? Um, all right. Annette, what are some examples of educational content that aren't tutorials? Um, there's so many. It's like uh, five mistakes that cause... Um, bad um, communication with your spouse, right? That's not a tutorial. Five, you're revealing mistakes, right? Um, that's, just, that's just one example. Again, inside of our program, we have like six or seven different ways to do it, but that's just one, one example. Also, just look at everything I did today. Did you guys learn something? Did you get more clarity? Did you have some ahas? If so, I didn't use tutorials. I didn't, there's no steps to anything today, right? So that's another way of, of doing it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's a question that came in. It was like, I'm just starting out. I don't have any audience. I'm brand new. Yes, guys. It's like what I said in the beginning. I don't care what platform you use. I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care how much experience you have. I don't care if you're at a seven-figure level. I don't care if you never made a sale. I don't care if you even never even posted a video. I don't even care if you don't even have an Instagram set up right now. If you know you want to start a business that helps other people using content, this is for you now. If it were me starting out, I wouldn't want to move forward doing wrong things that aren't going to produce results for three months, six months, or a year, only to have to come back when we open up card again, when we do this presentation again. I personally would rather just figure it out how to do it the right way in the beginning so I go down the right path. So if your brain's thinking new, I would actually be re really listening even more than everyone else because everyone else has been trying to do it one way and it's not working, that's why they're here. You actually have the opportunity to learn this stuff before you even get started. So you're actually in a better spot than most people. And I think there are some specifically with the VIP package. 
Okay. Yeah, so VIP would be beneficial for you, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so what we want you guys to do is go ask your questions in the Q&A section. So if you look on, for me, it's on the right side, there's a question tab. It looks like a little bubble mark with a, with a question mark in it. Go ask your questions there. Start doing it now. I'm gonna give you, if you have a question, ask it there. And what I want you guys to start doing is voting for the questions that you want answered. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this for about two minutes. So go ahead, um, go do that now. So there's a Q&A little bubble. And what I want you to do is start asking a question and voting. The voting's going on now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna answer the top five questions that, that get voted to the top. And then tomorrow for the Q&A session for VIP, um, we'll answer everyone else's questions there. Matt, what, um, do you know what time the Q&A session is tomorrow? Um, I do not, but for instance, like it'll continue, I'll just drop it in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna check my calendar. I know there's a question about what time tomorrow. So let me double check. Um, two o'clock Pacific Standard Time, it looks like. No, wait, nope, that's not right. 10, yeah, it's same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. So same time as today, it'll be tomorrow. Okay. Okay, guys, 30 more seconds to get your questions and voting in, and then we're gonna answer it, and we'll wrap up day number one. It's starting to really snow, I love it. I don't know about you guys, but I love snowy days. It's nice and cozy, fireplace. What a beautiful day to be able to do some training. Good questions? Are they, yeah, are these the ones that are getting upvoted? Yep. Okay. Okay, guys, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, almost lost count, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Voting is done. Okay, so I'm gonna go to question number one with 24 votes. Here's the question. Brandon, if you could give us one piece of homework to reflect on, to take some space and to think about internally, find the answers, what would you have us reflect on? I'll make it super easy. I can't explain enough how important relevancy is. And we have to understand that we are here to solve people's problems. The first part of relevancy is problems. Okay? So, what I would start doing, and not just any problems, but I want specific problems. If I said to you, um, if I came up with a piece of copy and it said, are you an overwhelmed mom? That sounds like everyone else, right? It's very generalized. In fact, if I went to 10 different moms and I said, are you overwhelmed? Explain that to me. I'm gonna get 10 different interpretations and ideas and explanations of what overwhelmed means. So when I say, are you overwhelmed in a piece of copy or whatever, no mom is gonna sit there and going like, oh my God, you're speaking to my exact situation. No one, they're not gonna say that, right? But if I said, hey, are you a, a mom who wakes up tired every single day? You have to yell at your kids a minimum of two times every morning just to get them to eat their breakfast and then you're running five minutes late out the door almost every day. Guess what? That's a problem that you're either experiencing that or you're not. It's also very specific. So when you hear it, you're going like, how'd you know that? You're inside my, my head. How did you figure that out? So knowing the specific problems is very, very important. Now, what's, what's, for me, everything stems from the problem. So it's always gonna be like, you know, let's, let's just say, um, let's just say you wake up tired, wake, uh, my audience wakes up tired um, three times a week, even though they get eight hours of sleep a night, okay? That's a very specific problem. So if I put that in a piece of copy, it says, you wait, do you wake up tired at least three times a week even though you're getting more than eight hours of sleep a night? It's very specific. People are like, oh my God, yeah, that's exactly what I'm dealing with. It feels, it feels relevant to them, right? So that's the problem. That's just one specific problem. But this can be turned into so many different things. If I want to 
ask myself, what's the transformation I give people or what's the benefit? I would say, what's the opposite of waking up tired three times a week? I would say, you're going to feel refreshed every single day you wake up, even if you only get six hours of sleep every night. That's an amazing benefit, right? But it's the opposite of this problem. So even my benefits and my transformation I give come from problems. When I want to come up with content titles, I could come up with, with something that says like, how to wake up refreshed one extra day a week for people who sleep eight hours uh, a night or something like that, right? So it's a very specific title. It's based on how to. I could say, I could even say, do a piece of content that's called five um, things that are happening in your sleep that cause you to be tired in the morning even if you're getting eight hours a night. And that could be a carousel, right? You just swipe through the five things. So problems create almost everything inside of our business, even though they don't look like problems when the audience sees it. So the audience is going to look at that and go like, wow, that's a very interesting piece of content. That's a very educational piece of content. Not really realizing the very specific problem they're dealing with is what inspired that topic in the first place. Can I go to the chat and I just want to see, does this make sense? Do you guys understand that? That concept? Do you guys understand and see why the problems are so important? It's just yeses and nos uh, in the chat box. Does it make sense to you guys? Are you seeing the correlation with problems and mistakes and stuff? Yes. Okay. Cool. So if I was to leave you, if I was to leave you with any homework to do for day two and three, because day two and day three, we're going to be talking about sales. We're going to be talking about content. We're going to be talking about that stuff. I think the homework that I would give you is to come up with three to five specific problems. And I'll be honest with you guys, you're probably not going to do it right. This takes time. It takes time to really like sit through and then we have to test it and we have to tweak it and we have to see how it's working and how is it resonating, but to at least get the wheels spinning. This is also why new generation mastery is so powerful because we have exercises and workbooks to pull these things out and we have a testing process that you can use in order to start testing it as well. Okay. So this is the homework that I would give you is to start thinking through this because this is going to be the foundation of a lot of your messaging. It really, really is. And again, you have to remember, we're here to solve people's problems. And if you don't know what problems you're here to solve, well, it's going to be really hard to, to sell anything, to create content that's, that's valuable and all that stuff. All right, question one done. Let's move on to question number two. Um, I've always been able, oh, I've always been told to have only one or two problems that I solve. How can I target up to five problems and still stay clear of my messaging? Beautiful question. Love this question. These are great questions. Who asked that? Does it even, doesn't show me. All right, whoever asked that, you're, that's a great question. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how this works. So if you look at the holistic psychologist, she solves a lot of problems. I believe we should have like one or two avatars, not problems. Like even today, I, I went through like five or six different problems that you guys are having. I talked about sales. I talked about content not getting engagement. I talked about lack of clarity. I talked about a lot of different problems, right? So here is how I look at everything. So right, remember the content circle of death? Remember how I talked about your niche as a circle? Okay, so this is your niche. So what I want you to do is I want you guys to come up with all the problems in the world that you solve. Don't just come up with one or two because you might come up with one and it may not even work. Remember what I said, we have to test everything. We let the behavior of our audience dictate what we talk about, okay? So if you just randomly pick one problem, you're just hoping that you get lucky. So what I'm saying is come up with all the problems because not all problems are created equal. Not all of them are gonna be relevant to your audience. So what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna create all of this content. We'll talk about this tomorrow, but there's educational content, there's self-diagnosing content. Your mind's gonna be blown when we get the self-diagnosing content. But when you get, we have thought reversals, we have connection content, we have all these types of content that are going out, right? So you're gonna put them out. Most of them are gonna be based off of problems. So like connection content, for example, they should not be based off of problems. That should be based off of connection. Self-diagnosing will be based off of problems. Thought reversals, not really totally based off of problems. Educational can also be based off of problems, but you're gonna be putting out content, right? So be, let's just call it educational 
maybe some thought reversal, self-diagnosing connection, okay? So you're gonna be putting out, and, and one, of, one piece of content could be inspired by problem number one. This piece of content could be inspired by problem number two, this one by problem number three, this one by problem number four, this one by problem number five, and the list goes on. This one's just a connection piece. This one is a heart-centered piece. I'm gonna put a little heart there. This one is a self, uh, like a thought reversal like, uh, for thought leadership. This one's another problem base, so let's call it number six, and then we do another connection piece, right? So connection piece, little heart, another connection piece, little heart, another thought reversal, okay, great. And then we're gonna do another connection piece. Uh, no, sorry, yeah, another problem based piece. So we have, now we have eight problems or another one. So we have, we have eight, we have all this content, right? Some of it's connection, which builds the know, like, and trust. Some of it's thought reversals. So now we're getting thought leadership access. This one, some of these are based off of problems. Okay, so we have all these different types of content that are out. They're like little soldiers that are out there gaining something we need for sales, okay? So all of these, the four quadrants of content that we're gonna talk about on Wednesday, day number two, they're all designed to gain something that we need for audience growth and for sales, okay? But eight out of these pieces are based off of problems. So we have eight different problems that these are based out of. Now what you're gonna realize is, wow, Brandon, every time I talk about number eight, it just does really well. And I'll go like, okay, let's pay attention to that. And you might say, well, problem number two does pretty well too. I'm like, okay, let's pay attention to that. And I'm like, what about problem one, three, four? You're like, ah, man, every time I talk about those problems, they don't really land. I don't really get very much action on it. I don't get very much engagement on it. And I'll say, okay. So I'll say, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna build a funnel off of that one problem. And then we're gonna build a funnel off of this one problem. So, to answer the question, should we focus on one problem? Inside of your brand and your content, you should focus on a lot of different problems. When it comes to selling, sometimes we just wanna focus on one or two problems. So let me give you guys an example. Um, even though New Generation Mastery in this and this event that we have in our program, it only opens up one time a year. I do sell other things throughout the year, right? I just don't sell our signature messaging program. That's New Generation Mastery. It opens up next week. But there's other things that I do sell. So what I started to realize in our content was I started to realize, man, one of the biggest problems I'm hearing is that people just can't get their webinars to convert anymore. So I'm like, okay, let's do some content on webinars. Let's do a podcast episode on webinars, right? And then I started to realize this podcast episode I did about how to create content that gets DMs, that did really well too. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's create a funnel around that. So what I do is I have one funnel that's based off my biggest problems. Now, messaging can solve so many things, guys. Messaging can solve your ad problem, your email problem. It could solve your live streams, your launches, your evergreen. You saw the slides in the beginning of today, right? There's so many problems that, that messaging can fix. The thing is, is everyone tries to create a webinar, a funnel off of all of this. And then that's where your messaging falls apart because you're like, I talk about all these things and no one's really connecting or resonating with it. It's like, yeah, you're talking about too many damn things. So content is also being very disciplined. So when I know the biggest problems on webinars, I'm only gonna, in this funnel, I'm only gonna talk about messaging within webinars. Why? Because that's the biggest singular problem that seems to resonate with my audience at this time. And so I build a funnel off of that, right? And then all I do is I position whatever I'm selling as the thing that's gonna fix their webinars. Even though it could fix way more, that's why I position it. Then over here, it's the same it's the same thing. So when it comes to your brand and content, I believe you should focus on a lot of different problems. Also, what's gonna to start to happen is even though webinars are the main problem, there's a lot of smaller problems within webinars that I can mention. I'm still gonna mention five different things like your show up rates are declining. People are attending your webinars and saying great information and then leaving. Your ads to the webinars aren't working. People aren't showing up to the webinars. People aren't staying to the end, right? So even though the, this was the main problem, there's still gonna be set sub-problems that I'm gonna use on the presentation. I'm gonna say, hey, you're in the right place if you're experiencing this, this, and this, and this, so I continue to build that, that relevancy. So let me check in with you guys. Does that make sense to you? Does everyone follow along? Just put once, one in the chat box if that makes sense. 
So again, it's not about picking one problem or two. It's about going through all the problems, figuring out the theme. What is the main theme of a problem that keeps, keeps resonating? I'm going to do a funnel or a launch on that, and then I'm going to figure out sub-problems on that so I can build relevancy. Okay, cool. Bunch of ones. I realized it did not give you an option for no, so um, hopefully there, it makes sense to everyone. Okay, let's go to question number three. Um, okay, give us the homework if you've always been told. Okay, next one. What specifically can I ask myself to get in the mindset of shifting from how to actions the audience are taking incorrectly? Sh mindset of shifting from how to Oh, to actions, the audience. Okay. Um, what specific, how to shift the mindset from shifting from how to to actions the audience is doing incorrectly. Okay. So. The answer is your audience's perspective. And I'll tell you guys, this is actually really hard to do. I've been, I've been with my wife since we were 16 and 15 years old. I'm now 40. So I was 16 when we started. Is that 24 years? 24 years I've been with my wife. And date, dating. We've only been married for, I don't know, 12 or 13 years, but been together for 24 years. One of the hardest damn things that I've had to learn in being in a relationship with someone else is to understand the fact that my perspective, the things that I believe to be true, believe to be right, are my perspective, and they're not actually right. They're just what my mind has told me is truth, right? And on the flip side of that, is tapping into her perspective, her truth, her reality, has been one of the hardest damn things I've ever had to do. But because I've been able to do it, not perfectly, I can also do it with my kids now. And when you have that, it allows the communication to be so much more effective. Because when I realize, like my son, for example, and I asked him to clean his room, and I realize he's in the middle of organizing his Pokemon cards, and I can walk in and, and I get outside of my own perspective, my perspective says, this room needs to be cleaned, and I can observe the, the situation, I observe what's going on, I can look at this and go, what's William's perspective right now? He's organizing his cards, he's in it, he's enjoying it, he's having fun. If I interrupt that, it's gonna be really hard for him to clean up his Legos. So I have a choice if I want this to go smoothly. I could say, hey, once you finish that up, can you pick this up? Or I can try to figure out my communication style. But my communication changes based off of his perspective. Most people don't do that. And even I don't do it 100% of the time. I only do it like when I'm emotionally in a stable place, right? Even when I'm in an emotional state, this, this goes out the freaking window, right? But this is required for great messaging. And the reason why is because you need to get inside of your audience's perspective. So when you're not inside of your audience's perspective, here's where your focus is most likely going to be. Your perspective is most likely gonna be on your skills, Knowledge, what can I teach? Um, knowledge, skills, what I teach? What are my degrees and certifications in? And that's probably enough. So, right, this is where most of us are creating our content. We're going like, what can I teach? What's going to like educate people? What's going to whatever, right? If you want to start to switch that and understand how do I take these things and communicate them in a way that lands, ask yourself, why do they need it? Simple question. This piece of content you're thinking of doing, this launch that you're thinking of doing, have you ever asked yourself, why do they actually need it? Most people don't. Most people just sit there and go like, okay, what are the benefits I can create? What's the juicy benefit that's going to get them to come in? And then I'm just going to deliver all this information. Never asking, why do they actually need it? What are they experiencing? What 
What are they experiencing they don't want to experience anymore? Why do they need it? What are they experiencing that they don't want to experience anymore? What are they doing to fix it? And better yet, what are they doing to try to fix it? It's probably a better way to phrase that. What are they doing that causes it? How are they feeling? And when you start to tap into this, you start to tap into their reality. You start to tap into their perspective. You start to build relevancy because they read it and they go like, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's exactly what I'm feeling. It's exactly what I'm going through. And you, got, you have them now. You have that relevancy bond. Whereas if we just focus on this, we just focus on here's my skills, here's my knowledge. It, takes, it doesn't take them into account at all. It takes you and what you want to talk about and what your knowledge is. And, and some of us teach because we want to feel smart. Some of us want to teach because we want to go deep. Some of us teach because we have insecurities and we just want to look really smart in front of other people, which is also fine. There's a time for that. But we don't want to start with that, right? You don't want to start on step eight when your audience is on step one. So for me, these are the questions I started to ask myself. And there's a lot more questions here like, well, what industry norms and what beliefs do they have? And, what the, there's, and we're going to talk about this more in day two. But what do they need? What are they experiencing? What are they doing to try to fix it? What's causing it? What are they feeling? When you start to tap into that, you get more into the mindset of what are they actually doing? What's their reality? Maybe if you're someone who is helping someone else go through something you went through, you can look at your own experience. What was I doing back then that they're also doing? And that's how we start to tap into what are they doing? What are their problems? And then we let the problems dictate, okay, this is what I'm gonna talk about today. We don't sit there and go, okay, here's my skill and let me just do it because I'm skilled in it. We go like, here's the problem. And then we can go to this stuff. We go, here's the problem they have. What part of my skills, what part of my knowledge, what can I teach? What, what can I pull from my degree or my certification that addresses their experience, that addresses their problem, that addresses their feelings, that addresses their causes, that addresses their actions? And that's when we start to make some powerful shifts in the way we communicate. Okay, give me a two if that makes sense in the chat. Give me a three if that does not make sense in the chat. Two and three. Yes and no. Let me know if that makes sense, if there's any clarifying questions, and we're going to move on to question number four here in a second. So two means yes makes sense. Three means no. Okay, a bunch of twos. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Two, two, two across the board. Okay. Now, I'll tell you guys, this here, it takes time. It's, it's an art. This is like we have a whole process dedicated to this inside of NGM, New Generation Mastery, going, going through these things. So if, as long as the concept makes sense and you start to test it, you'll get better and better with it the more you, the more you do. Okay, great. Seems to make sense for almost everyone. Um, let's move on to the next question. Um, okay, so that one's done. We answered that one. We answered that one. Um, okay, next question. How do I differentiate between what the problem is versus what the client thinks it is? For example, I help women heal disordered eating and body, okay? They think they're not dieting. I know it's unhealthy. This is a beautiful question. So, okay. And what you're, what you're doing here, um, I don't know who answered, asked that question, but what you're doing is what you're not doing is looking at your audience's perspective. Remember that example I gave with Rachel and she's talking about trying to get parents to opt in and buy her stuff because she's saying, well, do you want a dysregulated system? She knows the problem is a dysregulated nervous system. They do not. So you don't talk about the things that they're not aware of. So when you know that they have an unhealthy relationship with self, but they don't know it, guess what? You don't talk about it at all ever in the first steps, okay? You can talk about it. 
But when you want to run an ad or an invite to a webinar or put out content, don't talk about it right in the beginning. So you're not going to say something like, how to have a healthy relationship with self, because that's only going to speak to the people that know they don't have a, a relationship with self. So what you're going to ask yourself is when someone doesn't have a healthy relationship with themselves, what starts to manifest and appear inside of their life? And that's where you get the problems, okay? So ask yourself, you can ask yourself, what is the actual problem here? The next question you need to ask yourself is, is my audience aware that this is the problem? If your audience is not aware that's the problem, then we don't want to talk about it in the beginning. What you want to ask yourself is, what's happening because this is happening? Okay? So there's going to be two problems. There's going to be the problem that you know is the actual problem. And then there's going to be the problem that they're currently experiencing. It's within their awareness. This is what you want to tap into. Okay. Now, this is also where self-diagnosing content, which we'll talk about on Wednesday, is going to be really important because you could sprinkle in content that's something like five signs you have an unhealthy relationship with self. Five ways um, a lack of self-love will show up in a relationship. Um, how to know if self -love, lack of self-love is causing fights in your relationship. This is what I would cause, call self-diagnosing content, where people are like, it's kind of a curiosity-driven title, but then when they read it, they start to go like, holy crap, maybe, maybe I don't have a great relationship with myself. So this is what I call self-diagnosing. You get them to come up with their own conclusions. So if you are going to talk about it in the beginning, you have to use self-diagnosing content. But you also want to use content that is around their current experience. Okay, this will make more sense on, after Wednesday. Okay, so let's do a check-in with you guys. Give me, give me an 11, if that makes sense. Give me a four if it does not. 11 if it makes sense, four if it does not. 11 if it makes sense, four if it does not. Cool. Now, this might be getting too, too much too soon, but there's something that we call bridging. Bridging is something that gets someone from where they're at to where they need to be. So you can use bridges, especially in webinars and live presentations like this, um, to get someone to that point. So if you want to see a master of this, go again, go to Holistic Psychologist and check out her content. She's a master of getting people to realize the things they didn't realize, re realize what the root cause actually is. And it's also something that I did with you guys today. I brought you on a journey messaging-wise to get you to realize I have a messaging problem, messaging is the root cause, messaging is, is what's off. And if you really truly had a messaging problem, then then my messaging, then you would, have, you would have felt the messaging today was very relevant to you. Okay, last question, and then we'll wrap up after that. Um, okay, so we did that one, we did that one, two, three. Okay, last question. Is the messaging, okay, we did that one. What if we solve multiple problems for business owners? How do we, okay, we actually answered that one already too. Best ways to step into our customer awareness. How do we do that? Well, a couple ways. Number one is if you are helping people through a transformation you have done yourself. Gone through yourself. Which camera am I looking at this one? Yeah, okay. Um, if you are helping people with a transformation you've gone through yourself, you can just look at your own experience. That's number one. Number two Listen to your audience and what they're saying is number three. Again, don't ask them questions, but listen to their unprompted answers on certain things. They'll tell you. Also look for patterns. So even surveys, even though I said don't survey your audience, I just saying you can survey them, just don't, just don't blindly follow it. 
But if you start to realize there's patterns here, then you start to pay attention to it. Number three is you guess and you check. You just kind of go through and understand. And I'll tell you this, the reason why our program is called New Generation Mastery is because the people that have more mastery have deeper messaging. Because they have mastery over their craft, which means they have more experience, which means they've worked with more people, so they've seen more things, they know more things. However, I'll tell you this, don't sit there and say, well, I don't have mastery, so uh, tough, tough luck for me. No, go get it. That's the whole point. I didn't have any mastery. I didn't have any experience. I gained it over the last five years. But if we know that and we take a focus on that, then we can see like maybe just do a low end offer just to get people in. So you have more experience. You work with more people. You can see more of their mistakes, right? Um, even working with people for free in the beginning, gain more mastery. So again, you can just look at your past experience, look at patterns and language from your, your audience. You can guess and check um, and just start having more questions for people that are your, the people that you want more of. And what I mean is, is you ask better, deeper questions. So if you ask someone, what is your, what's the problem? And they go, oh, I'm just feeling overwhelmed. That's not gonna leave you with a very good answer. So you want a second question. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? And they're like, what do you mean? What does your overwhelm look like? You said you're overwhelmed, but like describe it as if a video camera was capturing it. And they start to describe, well, it feels like um, I have to yell at my kids, you know, just to get them to listen. And I'd be like, oh, interesting. How many times would you say that's happening a week? Okay. Well, what ages are your kids? Okay. Um, do they listen to you after the first time you yell? How many times of yelling does it take? You start to ask all of these questions and you start to get all of these details and you start to formulate very specific problems. And then we put it into content and then we test it and we just wait to see the behavior of what's landing and what's not. And I already know what's going to happen. Some of you guys are going to take it and you're going to come into New Generation Mastery and you're going to nail the problems the first try. Some of you guys will take like five or six tries before you finally nail the problems that are starting to work and to resonate. We have a way of pulling it out. We have a way of getting the right questions answered. We have a way of putting them together. We have a way of putting them in the content. We have a way of testing it all in the program, but it still takes time. And you guys have to understand, I'm still learning the problems of my audience. Why? Because the problems shift. The problems change. So what, was, what the problems my audience was experiencing five years ago aren't the same problems they're experiencing now. So you have to be keeping your thumb on, on the pulse the entire time. So this is why I'm always testing new things, testing new problems. We did 600 sales calls last year. We're like, what are the patterns we're hearing on the sales call? Okay, let's test that. Let's try this. Let's try a headline over here. Let's do a podcast episode on this. Okay, that's working. That's not. Let's do a little bit more of this. And what we start to do is you start to formulate this beautiful ecosystem of really powerful messaging that works. And that's just what it takes. And again, once you get past the initial setup of it, it just takes maintenance. It's just kind of like, okay, I got the messaging that's working. Now it's like, oh, I heard this, let's just inject that. Okay, great, I heard this, let's inject that. And it becomes a lot easier over, over time, but it takes some work in the beginning to get it all situated. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap up here. Thank you so much for attending day number one. Make sure you are here on day number two because we're gonna start getting into the meat and potatoes. We're gonna go through the four quadrants of content. We're gonna start piecing all the content together. We're gonna go through different frameworks and then we're gonna talk about sales on day number three. And then next week we are opening up New Generation Mastery where we're gonna welcome a bunch of new students. I'm excited to work with you guys that are uh, gonna join us there. Um, for those VIP, we will see you tomorrow on the Q&A session. For everyone else, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Mark it in your calendars. I'm so excited. And don't forget to post those breakthroughs in the Facebook group. I'll be reading every single one. So take care, guys. See you in a few days.